Listening to the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 14 of the Emerald Flow Show. We are a podcast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. You can follow us on Twitter at Emerald Flow Show, and we're on all major podcasting apps. And if you're on Apple Music, leave us a five star review and some nice words if you've got the time. Uh, I am Gerard DeTrolio, and this week, Paul is away on business, so I have a very special guest that I am pleased to welcome here, Dylan Fox from the uh, Eastern Lariat. Dylan, how are you doing? Gerard, I'm completely honored to be here, and I'm very lucky that you decided to go slumming. You know, you're usually at the tip top of your game with Paul, great co-host, and now you've fallen so far that I'm here. And now, now that that's what the listeners have to look forward to. But uh, in all honesty, I am so happy to be on. You know, um, you know, we've known each other for a while now, and you've always been a great supporter of my show. Um, I, I, I co-host that with Striga. We're cagematch.net people. Uh, and he's like the main guy, one of the main guys. And we do that show. It's been around. I'm sure a lot of people listening might have heard of it already. But if not... I'm so happy to be on, and I hope I can do a good job replacing Paul. And I know, uh, Dr. Jonathan, if you're listening, he always puts you over whenever I have him on my Patreon shows. Oh, yes, that's true. So, so he's going to be shocked when, when this happens. I, you know, they never thought this would happen, or I, I, I thought it would happen, but maybe not so soon. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to be on. I think I probably told you even before you did the show, probably I said, if you do a show, you can have me on. And now that day has come, oh, 14 episodes in, and... Uh, I think this is what you meant, because I remember you threatened me not that long ago. You said I was going to pay for saying you were an ECW fan, and uh, this is what you meant. I was going to be invited on your show, I guess. So that's that's quite an interesting form of re- revenge you have there, Gerard, but I'm very happy to be on. Well, you know, they say keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I see. Okay, I, now at least you're drawing the line, <laughs> and I know I know where I stand with you. At least, okay, but, so we'll yeah. take the next three hours to yell at each other about ECW. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is now an ECW feuding uh, <laughs> fest right now. But no, uh, <laughs> we will definitely not do that. I promise. No, uh, you know, uh, if you like, I said, if you're not familiar with me or any of the stuff I've done, I am a big fan of Japanese wrestling, and I am so happy to talk. And particularly these promotions that you cover on this show. Uh, you know, usually with the All Japan and the Noah. Those are my favorite companies in a lot of ways, uh, even though maybe not <laughs> a lot of the modern stuff, some of their decisions are that, are that they've made lately, but I'm a huge fan of them overall, and I can't wait to talk about it with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was going to say, Dylan, in, in a lot of ways, not only did I want to do audio with you, I think you were a no-brainer to have on, because I was talking about this uh, when we were doing our, our last episode, the award show. These days, I think it's a combination of the, of the pandemic and I think it's also a combination of like every company having their own streaming service, finding people that are watching everything uh, is a lot harder to do these days, it seems like. Like I've totally dropped off on New Japan and 
you know, I only sort of zoom into the big matches on stardom. I'm really mostly obviously all Japan and Noah with a little bit of DDT, like we'll be talking today and Tokyo Joshi. And that's pretty much the extent of my uh, wrestling watching these days. Yeah, you know, uh, speaking of the Eastern Lariat and Half Year Awards, we're going to do our own version, uh, you know, a little later this week, I guess. Uh, we have a lot of votes going on. Hopefully, you have you voted in our awards, Gerard? If not, I'm going to make you vote. I will vote for the, these ones, definitely. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Uh, so, you know, you, you, uh, you know, the Emerald Flow Show Awards came out, the Half Year Awards came out, and you had a great team of people, you know, you've been posting them on your Twitter as well. I've really enjoyed seeing that and listening to it, obviously. But yes, uh, we, we need your opinion of all, uh, you know, of all of everyone. I think that we need as much as, as possible because your point's really good. I think with the streaming services and the rise of, the, of them, it's a little bit harder to follow just everything. And when you have something that you're paying for, I think you're naturally more attached to it and yeah. it gives you a little bit more of a time. And now we see stuff where people are fans of only DDT or only Dragon Gate or, you know, only All Japan. You could find that pretty much in any corner of Twitter or social media. And to see some, someone that watches everything, it is a lot rarer now than it used to be. But still, you can, you can see, if you do, that there is a lot to like right now in all of wrestling. Even in the bad times, even when crazy stuff is happening, which I'm sure we're, we're going to talk about at certain points, uh, especially in our preview, or stuff that maybe we don't always agree with, there's still a lot of good to be had. And pretty much every promotion, there's a, something for everybody going on right now. And that's a beautiful thing when it comes to Japanese wrestling. Yeah, definitely. And like, the whole reason I got into Tokyo Joshi was because it was on there on Wrestle Universe, right? So I'm like, oh, I, I know who Maki Ito is, so I'll start watching this, I guess. Who's your favorite in Tokyo Joshi? Uh, Rika. And she's getting the title shot. Yeah, too, but so she they... decided to go Goto under the waterfall, so I don't know <laughs> if that's a big curse or not. Listen, Tatsumi at least has already won the title. So that's something yeah. she'll have over Goto uh, as well. And I don't think she'll come out dressed, uh, you know, with the, the paint and the, and the symbols and all of that stuff. I think she was just, you know, zoning in for, through the waterfall. Or maybe she is inspired by Goto. And why not? Goto is an incredible wrestler. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, there, Goto is one of my OG favorites in Japanese wrestling. So I will not abide by any making fun of him. But yeah, Tatsumi is a, a great wrestler. Lots of great talent in all the promotions as well but this is not a joshi show to my knowledge uh, no. but we are talking about other things although i'm welcome to talk about anything you want to bring up <laughs> on here. no i always try to smuggle on just a little bit of tokyo joshi talk because i'm i'm really getting into it these days i was disappointed or not disappointed especially her story is very funny of just leaving the business to become a farmer but when Nodoka tenma left tokyo joshi pro i was i was very sad because she was one of my favorites i always hyped her up as one of the most underrated talents but obviously someone like Miyu Yamashita is an incredible performer somebody I definitely latched on to when I first started watching it and now the roster has really improved a lot over the years I, I feel like there was a point where even someone like Ito was not as great of a wrestler as she is now she was right. a great charisma person you know charismatic individual Saki Kai, same thing. Started out, I used to like really not like watching them wrestle, actually. But yeah. nowadays, they have all of the that's the stuff that made them cool to begin with. But they're also really fun and great wrestlers. So you see up and down the roster. I feel like Tokyo Joshi Pro has come a long way. And if you're a longtime fan, seeing them grow like that, that's the fun part about being with a singular promotion, too. By the way, I think that's something that appeals to a lot of people is that you can see people grow. You know, because there's a time in mean, pretty much any company, there's a lot of people. There's some people we're going to talk about today. We just talked about it off the air, where there was somebody who maybe wasn't as great as, you know, that we didn't think they were as great at first. And now we saw them grow and now like them a lot. There's people like that at every promotion. I think that's always very rewarding as a fan. Yeah, definitely. And last thing I'll say about Togo Joshi, I will be part of the review for Summer Sun Princess. So you can check that out at voicesofwrestling.com after the show. Cannot so, wait to read it. Yeah. So we move on to the King of DDT finals. Uh, we reviewed the sort of first two rounds on uh, two episodes ago, it would be now. And we were uh, into the tournament with the exception of the Yuki Ino matches. But uh, I thought this finished really strong. Uh, there were the first two dark matches. Strangely enough, eruption in the dark match. Yukio Sakaguchi, Saki Akai, and Hideki Okatani defeated Toru Washi, Soma Takao, and Toi Kojima in seven minutes and 55 seconds with a double arm suplex from Okatani on Kojima. 
short, good. I mean, eruption looked good, but really you want to give them the rub with what will happen would happen in the main event. You could have put them a little higher up on the card, but it was fine for what it was. Yeah, you know, well, first of all, I didn't watch the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's <laughs> funny. On our, on our last show, we actually talked about this <laughs> for, yeah. for a little bit. Oh, I didn't know if you watched the opening yeah. matches or just the tournament matches. Actually. Yeah, yes. Uh, you know, my co-host on my regular show, Striga, is a huge fan of Okatani. So I always make sure to, to watch them. And I'm a huge fan of Eruption, all of them, actually. So I always try to make sure to watch their matches. If it's not, like, you know, if it's not a Pheromones match, I try to make an appointment viewing. And even sometimes I will jump in if I, if I feel like it's a really big show. But, yeah, the match was good. It was uh, interesting to see Soma on there because he's been really more focused on Gambari Pro lately uh, with his Romance Dawn tag team. So we see him back here in the pre-show, like you said. Um, you know, fine opener. The highlights to me were when Kojima were in on his team, but it, it was a, a fine opener, I would say. Yeah. And then we move on. While well, you were saying you watch some undercards, do you watch Damnation TA matches? <laughs> Those are the ones I also try to avoid <laughs> a, as well. But I did watch this uh, because yeah. I really like seeing Kanan. Oh, uh, in he's, he, I was going to say, well, this is basically my main point of what I want to say about this match. He is a great pickup for DDT. Absolutely. I mean, pretty much since he came into the promotion, you could see that he's a guy that is a great pickup. Very young. But good size, good ability, charisma. He's like a hand in glove fit. Uh, he started in JTO, which is Takamichinoku's promotion after K Dojo closed. And he came up, and all of th- those guys, and girl too, with Micah and Stardom. Mm-hmm. But anybody from JTO, pretty much, you, you're guaranteed to have a really good talent on your hands. But him and DDT has turned out to be a really great fit. I've loved literally everything I've seen out of him since he came to DDT. And I think he's a guy that. And, and look, we're going to talk about him later. Some people come in and have great starts, then fall away for a while. But even that person is, is getting a little of a, a bit of a push, as we've seen here. So somebody like him, I think, you know, Kenan, he is going to have a great run, I think, in DDT. I feel like he's a hand glove fit, like I said. They always put put over Damnation a lot. I'm not the biggest Sasaki fan by any stretch. No, of neither am I. Neither am I. <laughs> uh, but yes, I do think him being around makes these matches a lot more watchable. And I always enjoy seeing him. Yeah, so it was just Daisuke Sasaki, MJ Paul, and Cannon defeating Yuji Hino, Yukio Naya, and Yuki Ishida uh, when um, Cannon pinned Ishida. I think we've talked about this before on the show. Naya has really improved, although maybe I'd like to see Hino a little higher up on the card. So the first official match of the show was the Pheromones, Dino, Ino, and Imanari. They defeated Akito, Honda, and Harada. I don't have anything to say about this. It was a pheromones match. Uh, I made it quite clear how much I have come to detest, you know, on the, um, on the award show where I gave him the worst wrestler and I gave his match against Mao in this very tournament, the worst match of the (laughs) half year. I see you hate, Eno even more than Dino. I do. Wow. That's strong words right now, ladies and gentlemen, but you know, it's funny because I think with DDT, I try to be a little understanding of this <laughs> madness because I feel like it's such it's so interwoven into their DNA as a company. Right. Well, that's Pat. why I find Dino. I like Dino more because he's okay, interwoven so... into the DNA of the company, like you know, for years and years now, right? But you just don't want it to expand to other. Yeah, people. Dino's not a bad little wrestler, or was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I talked about this on. I think it was the last show, but somebody who I had somebody who didn't know anything about wrestling and she watched the uh, the Cyber Fight Fest show I was watching and she really liked the Pheromones match on there. And I was I was stunned that at, that she liked, you know, and I just I never talked to her again after that. But, <laughs> no, but no, she, she was like such a big fan of everything going on on the show. But even that one. And I think about it when you look at the DDT fan base, I think it's such an eclectic mix of styles, varieties and um, you know demographics that it has its place in the company even though i'm with you completely whether it's eno dino or anyone involved Uh, i think uh, akito made a great move to get out get out of pheromones i think that was the probably one of the low points of his career and now he's back doing his thing uh still feuding with pheromones so it's still kind of goofy but still you know i'm with you pretty much everything you said on that one so but i i praise you and i appreciate your honesty and your bravery of picking dino over eno as a wrestler. 
So we move on to the uh, set first semifinal. Uh, Naomi Yoshimura defeated Yuki Ueno in 10 minutes and 46 seconds with the Osaka Pride. Um, yeah, I really like this. I think this was probably the fourth best match of the tournament. I think I would slot Yoshimura's match with uh, Harashima above it, but I mean, I thought it was a uh, good i liked how they sort of went for like or Yuena sort of tried to get like a big flash pin early on and everything and yoshimura fought back and yeah good way to get the tournament off to his good start what do you think dylan yeah you know i am a huge fan of Ueno. i think he's one of the absolute top tier guys in ddt and i love that match with naomi versus hiroshima that was my match of the tournament coming in to the show and i still think it's right up there so this match, they have a lot of history because I was a huge fan of Nautilus as a tag team. First of all, any tag team move, anything in wrestling that references Final Fantasy VIII is going to really be high on my list of favorites. Secondly, they're, they were an amazing team, one of my favorites in all of Japanese wrestling. So this had a lot of history for me as just as a fan. I have to say, I think it could have been a little bit better if it were like a final type of match. There's nothing wrong with it, but I did feel like uh, they started off, it felt like they held back, and then the last few minutes, it was one of those matches where the first half wasn't as good as the second half, which is very common in Japanese wrestling, not necessarily criticism of this match in particular, but I think if they had had a final where this went twice the amount of time, and they could really build some drama, I think it could have been even better, but for what it was, I thought it was uh, definitely a good opener, and a very good match to watch. Like I said, the, the, seat, the floor for these guys is still very high, I would say, and I, I liked it, but I, I think in my mind, they could have an even better match in the future. Yeah, definitely. Although I will say for whenever you have a show with a semis and a finals on it, I think yeah. the structure was pretty good, uh, especially given some of the matches that All Japan offers up when they do semifinals on shows uh, before the finals. Uh, and I'm thinking about like, oh, random roll up. Suwama rolled up Miyahara and the matches is sort of over out of nowhere type thing. So that, that's that's true i will say i, I remember this very tournament uh, yeah. <laughs> that you're talking about that in the semifinals yes yeah so i just think i just thought the match structures both of these were better than sometimes we've seen in uh semifinals on shows so next up kazusaru kaguchi finally defeating junaki well no actually that's not true he's defeated yakiyama before uh kazusaru kaguchi defeated junakiyama in 14 minutes and 28 seconds with the brain claw slam i really like this i think i was my second favorite match of the tournament um, I thought it was built really well. I thought, I don't want to say, I watched it a second time. I don't want to say, because I think my first reaction is like, oh, is Akiyama going to win? Watching it back, it wasn't quite as suspenseful. Like, will Akiyama pull it off? But I still think they did a pretty good job of being like, I, you know, Akiyama looking like he could win it. And then uh, Higuchi sort of powering through and winning. Uh, Dylan, what do you think? This is another one where I feel like they were kind of holding back earlier a little bit to save for the ending going, but the second half of the match was obviously really strong. And I think the way they incorporated drama wasn't necessarily through their wrestling, but more so as a fan, you've seen Higuchi come up short so many times going forward. It's something we always talk about on our show, whenever Higuchi comes up. And I feel like that kind of gave you in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, well, maybe he could, he could lose it here. I think that was more about what I was thinking in terms of having being on the edge of my seat, so to speak, with the result is that you would fear that he would lose it more than Akiyama would win it, if that makes sense. Yeah. But in, in the end, they still ended up coming through and they obviously, you know, these guys have great chemistry together. I feel like uh, lots of hard hitting moves. Uh, Akiyama didn't go soft on Higuchi at all. And by the end of the match, I think they did an effective job of Higuchi feeling like he earned this win, which is important. But I will say as a fan, I was at this point, I was like, I'm ready to get to this final match. I, I want to see how this is going to play out uh, more so than the semifinal matches. I think maybe it was my own mind that made me come a little short of these matches. They were they were good. But I like the main event a lot better than that, which is, I think is pretty fair. I think most people would agree with that. Oh, yeah, if, I just, agree. Uh, yeah, just with the result. But I even watching it, when I watched it live, I was thinking, I really want to see this main event now. And I think I kind of overlooked the semifinals because of that reason. Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. Um, I will say, though, I thought he did really well here. But ever since he's lost, he lost the KOD title, I think Akiyama's age is showing a little more than it was. 
that's a good point. I would say, I think that you can definitely look at that and see that. I think these are the kind of matches and we saw it. Uh, another match show we talked about, I don't think we're going to get into it here, but the great show that happened or Gleet, as some people call it, Nagata yeah. was in the main event of that. And I thought in that episode or that show, all of the stuff wrestling wise, you can definitely tell he's lost a lot, but the part where he just needs to hit hard, he can still do that really good. And it's still pretty awesome. And I feel a similar way to Akiyama when it comes to laying in and beating the hell out of somebody, he still does that really well. It's just some of the, the stuff in between that, the movement and the actual wrestling, where I think he's lost a little bit of a step. And he's still a very good wrestler, in my opinion. He, uh, he's still one of the ones I like the most on the entire roster. But I do see where you're coming from. I think you can definitely tell that he's not where he was even a year or two ago, I would no. say. It's more pronounced now. I mean, you could see little things before, but it's a lot, it's a lot more obvious now. And he's not in, in. He's not really as in position to have the big matches as he was as champion. Uh, you know, he's not in there with, and he's not in there with Takeshi either, who I just think is a world class talent. Uh, you know, Higuchi's a great wrestler as well, but stylistically, he's more prone to that. Just what I said, he is good at hard hitting type of matches, not necessarily dynamic matches. If you're facing an Akiyama and he's lost a step, you would want a guy who's can maybe elevate the match and escalate it properly through his movement and the dynamic te- tendencies that he brings. Someone like a Takeshi or an Endo, I think would fit into that category. Uh, I think Higuchi is more of a power wrestler, obviously. And I think that that's a different matchup for him. And I, I still liked it for what it was, but I do see where you're coming from on Akiyama as well. And then, so next up we had Yusuke Okada and Yuya Koroku. Uh, they defeated uh, Hiroshima and uh, Masahiro Takanashi. When oh, our boy, I think, we both are big Okada fans. Defeated Takanashi with a sudden death. This is a pretty good little match. Quick 10 minutes in and out. It set it up perfectly. And it's nice to see Okada finally get a big win after a while. But I think Takanashi's winning their universal title match. What do you think, Dylan? This was my main event, first <laughs> of all. I love Okada. He's literally, I remember when he came in. His very first match in all Japan, I saw him wrestle and I thought, this guy has something. And even back then, you could go back and listen to some of our old shows. And I was saying, I think this guy could be a bigger star than all of the, the next stream guys. Like, besides probably Kento, but of the other ones, I thought he had more upside than all of those guys. Charisma, in ring, everything he has is so great. And we've seen it when he gets the chance. It's such a weird career he leads where, you know, you look at any time he's gotten even a hint of an opportunity. I always point to his match with Hikaru Sato on the Aoki tribute show. That was like one of my favorite matches of 2019. I thought it was amazing. And then he comes into DDT and they start him off with Ueno and he's having amazing matches. And it looks like, oh, the sky's the limit. He's finally free of that goofball Tajiri as, as a booker and he can finally let himself shine. And then he just disappears. It feels like, where, where did he go? He's not even on Cyber Fight Fez. Where, what are you doing, DDT? Why is he not on the biggest show? He can't even find a place on the undercard. I couldn't believe that when I saw it. So imagine my surprise when suddenly he's now getting wins, you know, in a major match here over one of your champions. I mean, I mean, not major match, probably a little over dramatic, but getting a win over one of your champions and setting up a title shot pretty much out of nowhere because he's done nothing for a long time now. And I was so psyched and happy to see this. And I'm a big fan of, of Koroku as well. I think he's a yeah, great young talent for definitely. DDT. Yeah, he is my favorite of like the young guys they have. Uh, I think he's my my favorite to watch in the ring. I know everyone will point to Kojima, and, and I like him too, don't get me wrong. But Koroku to me is like a really great wrestler on the horizon. And Okada, I think, is one of the absolute most underrated talents in terms of maybe not underrated, but under pushed talents, I would say, in any company. So I was very happy to see him get the win here. Like you said, good little match. It's not going to blow up any award rankings or anything like that, I'm sure. But still, I think that it was so cool to see him get a win that I was psyched for this. I, I was uh, very happy. And that's kind of where I was at on the show. I was into this whole show, really, even besides the tournament. I mean, the semifinal matches were good. But then you see a match like this, and it felt like they were really clicking on all, all cylinders throughout this entire show. Now, do you think Okada has a chance in the Universal title match? or You know, I, I don't think so, because he hasn't had any kind of extended push, and Masta's done a great job in his role, whether in the, t- the title match or the 
tag team run that he had with Brooks. I think he's been a guy that they will always rely on. And I like him a lot too. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing against Takanashi, but I've, I've always enjoyed him. I think he has a great gimmick. love his style, which is very fast paced, uses a lot of flash pins. I think it's a really cool style. And I think they'll rely on him more right now. Okada just hasn't gotten there yet, but I think this is more like for Okada to me, this and this title challenge is more like a first step to where hopefully six months from now, maybe we can revisit this and he'll be more ready in their eyes to get a title. Yeah. Hopefully it's just, it's the first step of a, a renewed push, I think. And that will be the most we can hope for. Oh, hey, I, I listened to you guys' show a few, uh, of the, well, I've listened to all your episodes actually, to be <laughs> honest with you, but I remember you talking about when uh, Nomura came back to all Japan. Yeah. Uh, now. Yeah. And you, we were like, or you guys were thinking, oh, I wonder why Akiyama didn't, you know, didn't get him in here. And then you were talking about Okada, and it feels like, Akiyama, this is your boy. You got to protect him better. Uncle June, that's why they call you this. You're supposed to protect your boys. Okada has been disappeared on the cards ever since he came in after that initial first run. Uh, Jun Retsu really kind of, uh, I mean, everybody kind of disappeared from Jun Retsu. I want to say went to Gambari Pro, so I <laughs> yeah. guess that, that's better than Okada, but still, or, or not as, or Okada is better off than Wata say, I guess. But still, it's like, man, you got to stand up for your boys, Uncle June. I'm begging you. I love you. Why are you doing this to me? My favorite guy, you got to stand up for him. Maybe, maybe he finally has after all this time. He's realized. Uh, and somebody has realized in DDT that this guy is a tremendous talent and we want to see more from him. Yeah. And well, it's funny you bring up the Nomura because for all we know, maybe Nomura took a look at what Okada was doing in DDT and was like, I'll take my chances somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, that know. protection. Again, I, I have no proof <laughs> of that, but it certainly didn't help. I mean, it's, it's a theory, at it's least. It's a theory, it's a, anyway. a, a hypothesis, you yeah. could say. But yeah, yeah, he, he thought that protection would be there. And it's, uh, it wasn't as great. But yeah, no, nobody knows for sure on that. But even this, it's uh, just all speculation, all for giggles, pretty much. But we do know what is not for giggles is that Okada has not been doing anything for the last year. Yeah. So we need him to do more. And uh, hopefully we can see that because I think if all things are equal, he's to me, if you know, if they really wanted to get behind him, he's right at the tip top of the roster, in my opinion, in terms of in ring performance. You know, he I don't know if he can really be that comedic type of guy. You know, even someone like Ueno with Sonic Club, he has that kind of edge isn't the right word, but you know, that kind of slant to him where he could be a comedic style performer. Are you telling me that Okada being in Yoshitatsu Kingdom did not prom- preparing to be a great comedic wrestler listen we've seen the okada factions and and where that'll get you in life speaking of uh, factions that disappear he is known for those as well (laughs) but yes okada and all of his shenanigans with seigo and yoshitatsu unfortunately uh, i don't i don't know if they've seen enough out of him yet and maybe he will like i said maybe he'll do something and he'll show that but i think right now he's not really been able to show that as much as somebody like a, a Mao or Ueno or Shunma uh, that, you know, he hasn't been able to show that slant, so to speak. Yeah. And then our semi-main event was Chris Brooks and the debuting Andrew the Giant Everett. And they defeated Mao and Shunma Katsumata in 14 minutes and 59 seconds with a choke slam Spanish fly from Everett on uh, Katsumata. Uh, you know, I thought this was a good debut for Everett. I think he's a nice little wrestler. I saw some people really negative on him, which I don't totally get. I think the comedy here is a very different thing than the kind of pheromone stuff. And I don't mind it as much. Um, And I think Everett's going to get over to the GDT audience. And he kind of already was as far as I can tell, but you can't always complete with the the clap crowds. The only thing I'd say, I think you could have cut a couple of minutes off of this, but it did what it had to do in establishing Everett. I thought. (sighs) You know, I agree with you, actually, uh, that this kind of comedy, I really don't mind at all. You know, at the end of the day, like this is something so goofy that it totally fits with the DDT world, especially considering the giant is teaming with someone that's significantly taller than him. <laughs> I did here. laugh when Brooks did get on his knees a couple yeah. of times. That was funny. Yeah, exactly. So it's like such an obvious gimmick that it's impossible to, to even be mad at it, I feel like. But wrestling wise, like you said, I definitely think he'll get over with the fans. He's a guy that's been around over the years. He was all over the indies at one point. Uh, he had a, a run at Impact Wrestling. You know, 
he was of that era with like Trevor Lee and all of that. That's somebody I always compared him to in the Indies. Yeah, he kind of looks like him too, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they could be secret brothers like uh, Ogawa and Misawa. <laughs> it's like almost maybe th- that there's a conspiracy there uh, between Everett and, and Trevor Lee, but. They've given him this gimmick, which is pretty off the wall. I guess solely because he's one letter short of being Andre the Giant, or one letter too much of being Andre. So that gives him a little bit of a run there. Or Andre the Giant Panda as well. That could be the dream match that they're building to. But, you know, it was a fun little match here. It's not, again, I don't love this style, but for what they wanted to do, and for DDT, it fits their identity as a company so well, and I think it was pretty enjoyable. I totally agree with you that he's going to get over. He did a great job in his role. Brooks is somebody, I think, you know, for a while, he was another one of these guys where it's like, another, you know, we always go back and forth on ECW, and my my hatred of it as a company for so (laughs) many reasons. But I also have a noted history of being anti-Brit Res as, as well, so when Brooks came in, I just thought, uh, like him, because I, you know, I've seen him before. It's like, uh, you know, mediocre British wrestler style, one million, <laughs> you know, pretty much. But he's a guy that I've really think, I really think has grown over the last year or two. Absolutely. He, yeah, I think he's really stepped up big in, in the last couple of years. And obviously, when he first came in, even when he was on DDT originally, it felt like he was a guy that got it from like he really got himself over on social media more than anything else. He built yeah. up his fan base, knew what he was doing perfectly. And I have a lot of respect for that. If you could get attention on yourself like that. Uh, and it was a positive way to his fans. But I think as a wrestler, he was always somebody that I didn't really love that much. But the last couple of years, I think he's really gotten really great in his role, not just in the comedic sense and DDT and fitting in, but as a wrestler in general, I think he's really gotten a lot better. And he's somebody I really enjoy now. And uh, I think that they're, they, if they continue this team, I think he can really work for DDT because they, it's if they want to just let these guys unleash and have a straight up match, they can really go and I think bring a lot to the table as a team in addition to the comedy as well. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see what um, they've got planned for ever. I'm not sure how long he's here for on this current trip or if he's going right back or if he's staying till Peter Pan or what. So I don't know, but uh, we'll see. And then for the uh, main event. The King of DDT Finals, Kazusada Higuchi, defeated Naomi Yoshimura in 18 minutes and 55 seconds of the Brain Cloth Slam, winning the King of DDT Tournament and the KOD title. Finally, I believe after five previous unsuccessful attempts, he's finally done it. Um, I mean, this was in, I don't know, Dylan, you've probably watched more DDT over the years than I have, but to me, this felt unlike anything I've seen in DDT in the main event, like it's just two big guys really hitting hard. Whereas obviously like the main event style, when you think of Takeshita and Endo, you think high flying, high impact, obviously that's sort of been shaped by Ibushi and Omega previously. This was almost like smuggling in some Noah and King's road to the match and everything like this. I thought it was tremendous. I would probably put it maybe, I think, well, probably put it somewhere on my top 10 of the year, maybe like number 10 or number nine. Some of the moment, I thought the post-match with everything from the waving flag to Akiyama putting the title on him to a giant novelty check, which I always love to see in tournaments, just was a magic moment. We will always be the giant novelty check respectors on this show. Absolutely. Because I I completely agree. That's I hate how they've gone away from all of that stuff. Because to me, that was one of my favorite parts when I first started watching Japanese wrestling was the huge check, the huge trophies, everything feeling so special. I think that's something that, they, that especially New Japan has really went away from over the well, years. Well, Chono so. should be giving the G1 winner the novelty check every year, if you ask me. Good point <laughs> there. Um, you know, you mentioned the style of this match. It really brings you back to like when the big dog Ishikawa, uh, Shuji Ishikawa, was the, was oh, in DDT. That's right. Yes, I think I'm sure Higuchi must have wrestled him at some point too. There, so you probably got a very similar match there. Irie was champion a couple of times over the years, as well. They might have done something there. I don't know if, if Higuchi would have wrestled him though, because his run was very short. I, that was like when Sammy Callahan was doing stuff, <laughs> and that was a really hectic time in the DDT KOD title history. But they, yeah, since the days of Shuji was champion, I think we haven't seen something definitely not as memorable as this. You know, whatever happened with all of the others, they made this feel like a huge deal. And by the end of it, 
the match was very good. I've seen people say, you know, like I said, Stringer went crazy over this on the Eastern Larry, and he was saying it was the match of the year. He's a huge Higuchi fan, as always. Um, <laughs> well, I, you think, know, I think it's one of the best, but I wouldn't put it right, right at the top. Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, it was one of the better DDT matches, I would say, um, this year. But I think what really put it over the top was the post-match stuff with Yukio running in, Akiyama putting the title, which was a direct callback to last year yeah. uh, when Higuchi put the title on, on Akiyama. And Akiyama was just like, you put the title on me. Yes. <laughs> like ordering him to do it, basically. Yeah, so you don't say no to Akiyama no. in DDT. But he's, he, now he's finally won his respect after everything. And he's won all of our respect, I think, because he had a great performance in the tournament, and particularly in this match. It was, like you said, just uh, very different than the stuff you would have seen previously. And it totally worked. I think it was a very successful tournament overall. I said it a couple of weeks ago on our show. We were talking about all the companies, and I was thinking, man, DDT, I feel like, has had a really cold year. They're they're not the only ones, but when we were talking about them, I was just thinking, it feels like they've been missing something throughout this uh, last few months. But with this tournament, this uh, King of DDT tournament, I think throughout from the first round to here, I think that they've really grown a lot. And I thought this show was a really strong show up and down, even in the non-tournament matches. And then you get to this main event, you have this emotional moment that I really feel like if they play it right, this could be a legacy moment for not just Higuchi, but the whole company. Something we see in video packages yes. for you know years to come. It, I felt feel like. Like a, it felt like a new moment, like something, you know. And through the most, uh, you know, sad, you know, sad and, and messed up circumstances with Endo's injury, at Cyber Fight Fest that led to all of this. But I feel like this actually turned into something so classic that they could really, uh, you know, uh, make lemonade out of these lemons that they were given. Because now with Endo coming back, you have now a huge match. I think that this match is bigger than what it would have been if they, if Endo had just kept the title and they had just done what they had, whatever they had done. Right. Because I think that this, this ending wouldn't have felt as special as it did without him winning the title. Uh, so not. I, yeah, so I think that they've set up something where they're going to have a great main event for Peter Pan, and this whole company suddenly feels like it went from a, a pretty cold company, in my opinion, where there wasn't a lot of interesting stuff going on anywhere on the card, to now it feels like they're rocking and rolling. They have a new title challenger with Okada, Higuchi, first-time champion. You have a great match with Endo, Triumphant Return. You've got uh, you know tag team stuff going on. You've got a lot of great things. What's going to happen with Disaster Box going forward now, now that Yoshimura is there, uh, you know, and Hiroshima coming in there? You have a lot of great things going on in DDT right now, and it really feels like this promotion is heating up at just the right time. It feels like, um, uh, are you a fan of any kind of real sports like football or anything like that? Uh, definitely not football. I think most of my time is for pro sports is mostly NBA. So you're not a fan of CFL. Okay. Oh, I do I watch see. CFL. Yes. I have a very uh, close friend that is a huge CFL fan. So I've been to um, a number of CFL games over the years, actually. One of my cousins is a quarterback in the CFL. Really? Who? Uh, Trevor Harris uh, for Montreal Alouettes. Really? Yeah. Distant okay. cousin, but we are okay. related. Ah, <laughs> Believe it or not. That's really uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, totally. But I, you know, uh, regardless this feel what I was, where I was going with that was not to talk about CFL. Not that I'm against <laughs> that. If you, if, you, if you want to, I don't know if your listeners will appreciate that, oh, but it's w- very niche. Uh, you know. Yeah. But a uh, uh, great league shout out to CFL. But um, what I was going to say is this feels like a company that, you know, in real sports, like a football or a basketball, this would apply to as well. Um, it feels like a team heating up right before the playoffs. So somebody that was just hanging in there for most of the season. And then the last two or three weeks of the season, suddenly they go on this huge hot streak and they have a ton of momentum going into the playoff run. Because now with Peter Pan coming up, this is like their playoffs or, you know, or their Super Bowl or their championship, where this is the biggest show of the year for them as a company. Obviously, Cyber Fight Fez is, is probably the biggest show for all the companies combined. But this Peter Pan, it feels like suddenly they're a hot company up and down the card. They have a lot of cool stuff going on, still stuff to be announced. And it's really cool to see, because like I said, I went from being kind of cold on everything to now I'm really interested. And this is one of my favorite companies to watch right now from everything going on with Higuchi to how they're presenting it and how everything's going on there. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, definitely. And I give a little more love to Yoshimura, had a great tournament. Yeah, and that's what, that's what I was going to mention. And, I think and, this tournament was a total success. Yes. Yeah, 
And definitely. And so like what I wanted to say about Yoshimura and sort of like the new feeling of DDT is I expect him to continue to be a presence at the top of the card, which is going to, you know, be an influence on the styles with him and Higuchi as the big boy sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where I was going. I think they have a story with him and Hiroshima. Uh, There was a lot of that funky kind of booking with the tag team titles where they went back and forth and then they just lost them. (laughs) Like, you know, it was, was yeah, not great. Yeah, exactly. So it felt like they kind of lost some momentum where they were going, because I think they were, they were a great tag team, the, him and Hir- Hir- Hiroshima. If they wanted to give them a long run, they could have had a lot of bangers. But unfortunately, that happened how it happened. But now I feel like they have an interesting story with Disaster Box going forward and him at the center of it. Where is he going to go? Is he going to surpass Hiroshima? Will that be something they build to? Uh, will they get back on track as a tag team? It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. And so um, I'm just going to say, I guess, going forward i expect i expect higuchi to retain at at peter pan in part because of the moment they gave him here and another mo- reason although i haven't seen too many people talk about it i was chatting with a couple of people about it you would think maybe this doesn't apply in a company like ddt compared to if this happened in noah or even new japan but if you're the champion and you're getting ko'd in the middle of a big show you know, they might be cycling you down for a bit, even after your return. You know, like I said, I, I think that was something that I'd seen right when it happened, pretty much like the, the day or two after the, you know, the knockout happened. I think with DDT, it's hard for me to believe that they would even care about that that much. And for me personally, I don't know if this is a unique viewpoint or if it's shared by a lot of the fans. To me, I think getting knocked out isn't like, I don't think you lose credibility from that, even if it was in Noah or New Japan. That's just something that would happen. You know, that would happen in a real fight. You know, right. pretty much in, a, in an MMA. To me, well, that it was is, five minutes in. That's different that's than getting knocked out like twenty-five minutes in. I think that, that's true. But I think you would lose more credibility, in my opinion, if it were a tap out. Like if, say, he Nakajima got him in an armbar, but tweaked it too far, and he instinctively tapped out. Okay. Yes. That, yeah, that would lose a lot. That would be like a credibility loser to me than a knockout because that could happen to anybody, you know, at any time. You just, I mean, in real life, as we, we saw in that very match, right. you know, it could happen at any time, whether it's intended or not. Um, you know, so to me, and I think DDT, they're, they're advertised pretty much as a parody of a pro wrestling company, yeah. even as much as a pro wrestling company. So I don't think the fans would care about that with Indo, but I do think that Higuchi will retain the title either way. I actually think. Indo coming forward has a very interesting character arc he can go through if they want to. Uh, losing the title pretty much, you know, I, not just pretty much, in reality, in a way that nobody could have expected or thought about, and in a way that wasn't his fault at all. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it, so I think you have a very interesting character arc. If he loses this match with Higuchi, where he goes is almost as interesting as where Higuchi will go as right. champion. And I think that's something that I hope that they play off of going forward. If if Indo just beats Higuchi, I think that kind of takes away from this moment that we just saw. I mean, obviously it's a legendary moment and everything, but then if it was just like, oh, this was a filler title reign to get back to Indo, I think it loses something rather than Higuchi as champion for a little while. And who knows how long that's going to be as well. We can't really predict the future or anything, right. but we can speculate on it. But it feels like it's yeah. going to be something, right? And because like, to be honest, Endo wasn't exactly setting business on fire or anything like that. Yeah, and that, that's what I was kind of uh, alluding at earlier. I felt like the whole company was very cold going into that. And I was very, I think it was very weird to me. We're talking about stuff that happened over a month ago now, or almost a month ago. But it was very weird to me that Endo didn't have a title match on that show at Cyber Fight Fest. Why was he in a six-man tag to begin with? I don't know if that meant anything or they were setting up something in the future. Who knows? Yeah. But that was something very weird considering last year they had the title match on there. And for some reason that they, they kept him out of that for this year. So I wonder if, if what that meant, if that meant anything going in. But like you said, he wasn't exactly a super hot champion one way or the other. I actually think he's a lot more interesting now uh, if they can play this, their cards right. And like you said, Higuchi, first-time champion, got a lot of buzz. They put a lot into it. You can't say they half-assed his win. They made him no. feel like a superstar at the end of this. So they must have some kind of plans for him, you would think, uh, going forward. So I'm, I'm like you. I think he's going to win, and I think it's going to be a good thing for both of them at the end of the day in the long term, because I think Indo will be a very interesting character coming out of it, and they can build his redemption story up into a great thing. And Higuchi, I think, will be a very fun champion for the next few months and maybe even beyond. I think they could have somebody here. If he takes off, 
and has a great run and gets a lot of people talking. Like you said, this would be a different style that they've had in a while, you know, five, six years at this point, six, seven years, probably. Yeah. So you look at that. It's going to be interesting to see how the DDT fans specifically take to this. Yeah. Well, I was going to say about like where Higuchi's ring going, I was debating whether or not to say anything about this, but let's just say, and do not take this as fact, but I have heard that Takeshita's excursion may not be as long as people think. You know, I could see that. Now to, he's, to he's now he'll be back for Peter Pan and then he'll go back to the States, but it might not be that much longer after that I've heard, but that's not 100%. You know, it's so not I like to not. get this. It's not like Takeshita just told you this personally. Oh, no. I, I, I'm sure you wish that he would. I wish he talked to me. Takeshita, are you listening? Can, I'll bribe him with some Cinnabon or something to get all, <laughs> get all the dirt. That, that's the thing. I, I, would, I would try to use some Jedi mind tricks to try and get him to give me some Cinnabon because <laughs> I, I love that stuff too. Shout out to Takeshita, great, great wrestler. But no, um, you know, that would be very interesting if that happened. And he feels like a big enough name that they would want him there for their biggest show of the year. That's not very. You know, that's totally logical. Well, you know, whatever you would say. And in, in his U.S. excursion, I'm sure he's having a heck of a time. He he's done a lot like of big. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's having a lot of fun. And he's had some really strong matches as well. Even in AEW, that was a place I thought, ah, they're going to put him on dark and <laughs> not really do anything with him. They gave him a little bit there. They gave him more than I thought they would when they gave him that match with Hangman. And they, the fans really got into him. They really appreciated his wrestling. And why, would you, why wouldn't you? He's awesome. So... DDT wanting him back, that makes a lot of sense to me. I well, actually I think I don't know if it's DDT wanting him back, but maybe his just, just his it's just his, time. I think some people thought he was in there for at least a year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I see where it came but from. But it's gonna be less than that from you, what I may have, you know. Well, I'm I'm sure they do want him back. They're not saying yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we don't <laughs> stay in America, we don't want you. Right. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're not saying that. But no, I you know, I get where you're coming from too, that it might not have just have been as long as people thought. Because like you said, I think most people thought that he would be gone for a while. But if he does come back, I do hope that they avoid the temptation to put him as champion again. Right. Just because you know, we've seen that so many times, and I think that Higuchi feels like a fresh champion. You can build again. I think you could build, much like Endo, you could build to catch the story back uh, a lot better. Or you could put him in a tag team, which I think is a role he could really excel at with someone like Ueno if they wanted to do that. Or, what you know, however they plan for him. Whatever he does will be great, I think, for me, because I think he's such a great and spectacular talent. But from a story perspective, I think you have a lot of gas left in the Higuchi tank. Yes, definitely. And so that's why. And don't rush that match either. It does, Takeshi yeah. does come back sooner rather than later. I wouldn't rush that match either. Um, so the final note of DDT, and I think this is a little interesting one. On this show, they announced Akiyama's 30th anniversary show is on September 19th, and Yuji Nagata and your favorite, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, will be on that show. How dare you? <laughs> uh, but it's on September 18th. Do you know who else has a show on September 18th? Who? Tell us. It's All Japan's 50th anniversary Budokan show. Oh, I've heard of this show vaguely, but yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's very interesting. So yeah, now the DDT show, that's the Akiyama 30th anniversary is at 11.30 a.m. Japan time, and then All Japan starts at 4.30 p.m. But I just thought that was interesting given Nagata's, you know, we'll be, we'll be talking about Nagata some more, actually. So I just thought <laughs> yes. that was interesting. That is true. You know? I, I don't know what to think of it. Who booked which show first? Well, and, all Japan announced. Yeah, that that, that had to be first. They announced that yeah. like in January or February. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I wonder why they specifically uh, DDT did. I uh, picked this as, as well. I wonder if there's well, a story behind that. It's either the 17th or 18th is legit Akiyama's debut date. Ah, uh, okay, uh, that makes sense. I don't know what to think of it. We'll just have to see where. Well, it, look, that's plenty of time to get people over to Budokan. Yeah, you know it's. It's just interesting when you mm -hmm. when you look at it, but yeah, that's that's a weird thing. I like I said, I I guess because of the Akiyama's debut date, yes. But from a business perspective, I, if it were me, I wouldn't want to be on the same day as any kind of big show. I want that day for myself if yeah. I ran a company, no matter what the reasons are. <laughs> so, but you know, they they chose it, so it's going to be interesting. It'll be fun to see how the fans take to it too, uh, you know, because that's going to be a really big test for all Japan that Budokan show. Just oh, how many sure. people they get in there. How will it compare to DDT? Right. Hey, remember, they had a very similar situation when Noah 
uh, came back to Sumo Hall the first time with Kaito and Keno, where that was like right around the same time as DDT, and everybody thought Noah would suffer for it, and they uh, they got right up to the same near the same amount. It wasn't of, Big Japan the week before? Yeah, one of their biggest shows uh, too in Sumo Hall. Uh, yeah. was right around that they were all around the same time i don't know if it was the exact same day but they were all around the same time and a lot of people thought that would hurt noah but it actually didn't in the long run so i wonder if it's the same situation with this where all japan will be able to, to you know dodge that i've always thought that ddt and dragon gate have maybe have different fan bases than all japan new japan and yes. noah yeah. but akiyama is the x factor because i think it would be That's different true. if it was just a ddt sunday cork and the usual yeah, I agree with that. And uh, that, like you said, that could make a, a difference as well. Yeah, and they're using someone that All Japan is using right now too. We'll just so, have to we'll have to figure we'll, out how we'll they talk, work that out. We'll talk more about that Budokan show in, in a few minutes. So we'll zoom over to uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. And so, real quick, they had on uh, June twenty third and twenty fourth at Yokohama Radiant Hall two shows. The twenty third was an innovation. Um, this was main evented by Hayata defending the GHC Junior title against Hajime Ohara. That match, Hayata won. That met, match went 24 minutes too long. That's all I really have to say about that. It was a Hayata match that was 24 minutes. You've seen it before. Is there any Hayata match that's too short, you think? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing. Th- this felt like one of the colder uh, in-, in innovation shows. Yeah, they definitely. Had in a while. Like, well, to me, this, yeah. Except for one match, but. Yeah, I was going to say that to me, the semi main event was a lot uh, of more interest to me than this title match. Um, you know, it's like you know what you're going to get w- with them in-, in the main event, and at least you had stuff going on. And you had the, uh, you even had the Dragon Gate title match too on uh, that show. So to, to and, me, and this the, is. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, so we'll get to. Let's, I guess we'll just, we did the top, so we'll work down. So then, yeah, yeah semi-main event, to me, the match of the show, Tadasuke defeated Howe in 16 minutes and 10 seconds with the outcast, and Howe was banished. This was a lot of fun. Like, we were talking off air. We are Tadasuke fans now, Tadasuke respectors. And this was a lot of fun, great near falls. And at this point, any match that can get crowd reactions, especially for the closing stretch, you got to give a few extra points to you, as far as I'm concerned. A, a long time Tadasuke respect or an O Pro original. Uh, anybody from Osaka Pro will always have my blessing, pretty much. Uh, so I always have a love for Tadasuke. Although he's uh, with this look, I could see why people maybe were hesitant to like him for a long time. I think now we've all gotten over that. And now we realize that Tadasuke is a very good power junior guy. Although some people would say he's not a junior at all <laughs> at time, times. Uh, but regardless, he worked really well here. And just like I told you off the air, the, my one disappointment with all of this is I remember these guys before Howe left Congo, these guys had one title match, uh, like a tag team title match together. And they were an, an absolutely great tag team. And I thought, man, these guys, if they give them a run, they could be a really great team that everybody ends up loving. And Howe and Neo were a good team too. No, don't get me wrong. But I think Howe and Tadasuke had something with them. That the, the contrast of styles really made them special. But here with Howe, I kind of anticipated Howe leaving. My idea was that Howe would lose and they would bring him back under a mask, you know, his original you, mission. So I, yeah, I was going to get to that. Do you think Howe is leaving? No, I oh, think okay. that they're going to bring him back under a mask. Right. Okay. <laughs> as, Sorry, yeah. As, okay. yeah yes. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm sort of expecting as well, yeah. I mean, if he leaves, I mean, we don't know what's going on in his life. Maybe this is a personal thing yeah. and we could hear about that. But with the information we have now, it makes sense for him to come back under a new gimmick, yes. you know, I, mean, I actually think it would be good for him because he's been around for a while now and he's lost a lot in his matches. Uh, so getting a fresh start, but the thing is, he's such a talented guy that I love him so much and want him to win, but they've never pushed him. And I, maybe they feel like they've done a little bit too much damage to him and they want to give him a fresh start uh, with a, a new gimmick. 
or I just bring back his old gimmick if they wanted, uh, like uh, Ken by when he was in Michinoku Pro. Uh, so you can bring that back or do whatever you're going to do with him. But I hope he doesn't leave because he's a great talent and he's a guy that's a benefit to the roster. Even if he's losing a lot, I think he actually makes others look better because he's so small that he will uh, make your uh, other guys look like even bigger stars. And he wrestles so good that you rally behind him anyway. So I think he has pretty much everything you want. And I thought this was a really strong match, actually, uh, between the two. They have great chemistry as partners, and they have great chemistry as, as singles wrestlers, too. You know, I, I talked earlier about DDT maybe being a cult promotion. I think Noah has had a really rough year yeah. o- o- overall. But how has been one of the highlights? His yeah. With Congo and... Uh... Yeah, and, yeah, him and Neo. I mean, you know, like, who would have thought, you know, Hiroki, like, of all people, or yeah. High 69, as some people <laughs> may call him. I used like, to call him High 69 when I first ever saw that name because he would have been... He would have been working some All Japan shows right after, soon after yeah. he debuted in K-Dojo. And I was like, oh, High 69. Yes, I'm sure that was that many fans probably had a lot of fun with that name <laughs> over the years. But who would have thought that he would be such a, a really fun talent and being a part of such a great feud with Howe in 2022? Mm-hmm. So you see something like that. Like you said, Howe has probably been one of the better overall wrestlers in NOAA this year. So if he leaves, that's going to be a big blow to the junior divisions. But uh, the division so hectic, you know, with so many turns and things like that, I think it's hard for anybody to really get momentum yeah. in the company at the moment but i think if they bring him back and they give him a little bit of a run i really think he can get over to this fan base and be like a top star in the junior division if they if they really get behind him give him a month or two just have him come out of the gate maybe with a new gimmick like i said i think he can be a big star for the juniors yeah definitely and then so from there uh daisuke harada i believe had to vacate because he was had a fever uh, so that was the reason. So we had an open to triangle gate uh, decision match, and it was Los Perros, Del Mal, Nosawa, Eita, and Kotaro Suzuki defeating Atsushi Kotoge, Yohei, and Extreme Tiger in 10 10 uh, when Eita used the Imperial Uno on Yohei. Um, it's fine. I don't know. Just flat 10 minute match. I'm getting, I'm getting sort of bored of these like triangle gate matches in noah because they're not what they are and it's like the same guys and peros in the scene so i don't know it was just there for me not bad but whatever i have no love for peros the ball they help on i just the thing is like okay someone like uh, Kot- kotaro is a great wrestler we yeah. all love Ata, tremendous talent in my opinion love everything about him nosawa He's a veteran. He's been around for a while. There's no question about that. He's wrestled many matches, and he is, in fact, a pro wrestler. He can list that on his resume. But this whole style, the gimmick, it just it doesn't work for me. Like, the package of this, I just don't think this works for me. And, you know, it hurts when you see a, a team like who they face with, with Kotege, Yohei, and Extreme Tiger it felt like a, just a thrown together kind of match, even though you, like you said, there were legitimate reasons behind it. It's just hard. Again, I think the entire division, you know, the company in and of itself has gone through a lot, taken a lot of hits, but I think the junior division in particular has really had a rough time. It's hard to be interested in any one person or group or team as a character, because it feels like they could change the titles at any point, you know, or they, ju- they could just take the titles back to Dragon Gate or somebody could turn on somebody. So it's really hard for me to really get into these juniors matches in Noah, even though there's a lot of great talent here. You know, so, like Kotege is historically one of my absolute favorite wrestlers in Noah. I think he's one of the best and one of the most underrated talents in general in Japan. A Suzuki, amazing performer, as I said. Yohei, I think he's a guy that's really improved a lot over the last couple of years. He's a guy that I used to really not like at all. Uh, him, his team with Hayata, I was never wanted to see them wrestle ever. But since he's really gotten on his own and being a part of this team with the regular army, I think he's really improved and shown a lot. And been a, a really guy, a guy that really tries hard in all of his matches, even if it's like second match on the show, he usually brings a lot of energy to a lot of his matches. So I really like all a lot of these guys as talent. Extreme Tiger, a, a fun luchador uh, coming in here, a, a veteran as well, somebody with a lot of experience. It feels like they should be able to have a really good match. But in this situation, the circumstances, the titles, it just wasn't that great. Yeah, no. Uh, I have been a little higher on than you, I think, on the NOAA junior division this year. But I felt after Sumo Hall, 
it's sort of gone down in quality. It's just, it's tough for me to, you know, what, well, let me ask you, what are you excited about in this division? That, that right makes now? You say that? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I liked it up until Sumo Hall. And then I thought the division sort of took a hit. I think it's definitely been, it's definitely been less interesting then. But even then, I think the, the main thing was how and Neo. Right. The, their, their feud was very good. But the Harada and Ata build, or the Ata and, and Hayata build, rather, was not anything special. And I was kind of disappointed with the Harada losing how he did right before the show. I was like, why did they do that? <laughs> you know, that was kind of my thought. And to see it all build back to Hayata, it feels like this company is incapable of doing anything in this division except build to Stinger getting titles, like no matter what the situation is. And that's a very, very good way to make me dis- disinterested in your product, even though they have some good wrestlers too in there. But I am not interested in anything that they have to, to do at this point, just because we've seen it over and over and over. And Hayata is champion. He he had this legendary quote unquote reign as champion. And then two months later, it's like we're right back to him as champion again. So what was even the point of that, you know, random two month thing? Just yeah. set up, you know, I just, I don't know. Maybe I was a little negative on it going in there, but I definitely think the How and Neo feud was really good. You had some good tag matches, uh, you know, with Kodage and Yohei, they gelled together again as a team way better than I thought they would. They had that match on the, on the Sumo Hall show, which I was going in, not that interested in. And then it turned out that they had a, you know, even at first, I remember watching it and I was thinking, oh, this is okay. Then you really praised it to me, I think. And oh, I, I was like, that match, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then I watched it again. I was thinking, you know what? Gerard was right. This match is kind of a banger. <laughs> like this match kind of rules. And that was a great match, like you said. So, yeah, there was some stuff. I think the feud and I think the tag team run was very good. Uh, but right now, like you said, even even then, even if that's true, I think we can all agree. It's a cold division at the moment, the last yes, few months. Definitely. And I think I think they can make some changes going forward, or I hope that they make some changes going forward. And then uh, Seki Yoshioka defeated Yuya Susumu in 17 minutes and 34 seconds with a crash driver. Again, way too long. Yuya Susumu shouldn't be having 17-minute matches as far as I'm concerned. And we learned this lesson at yes. Sumo Hall with him and, Ko- uh, with him and Kotaro. I-, I think Susumu, I, I really don't like him at all. No. I-, I-, I think he's really bad, and I, I don't know what they see in him. You know, they he had that one miraculous match when Kotage was champion last year, and I thought that was like the best match of his career by leaps and bounds. And it, it wasn't like a super special match, but it was a very good match. And I thought, whoa, like I can't believe he had a match this good. And then it's like he drifts around, like you know, a lot of the juniors tend to do sometimes if they're not a champion. He drifts around for a while, and suddenly he's now he's having all these twenty minute matches and seventeen minute matches. It's like, where where how did we get here? to where Susumu is the one we have to see in all these long matches. And Yoshioka, tremendous talent. I know we agree on this. He's a guy that, I've, like I said, if I ran Noah and I was booking the juniors, because, again, everybody knows I love Kotage and Harada. They're two of my favorite wrestlers in all of wrestling. But if I ran the junior division, I'd be building things around Yoshioka, How. Like, you know, uh, Alejandro, like those guys are the ones that I, I feel like have a lot of upside going forward, but they just flail around and, and they never get to do anything, it feels like, except have random matches versus Susumu of all people in, in the mid card, which is not what, not, that to me is not an ideal use of Yoshioka. Yeah. And then just had Ogawa defeated Kai Fujimura in 51 seconds, which I thought was hilarious and perfect. And yes. then in the opening match, it was play, uh, Kaito Kiyomiya and X, and guess who X turned out to be? Satoshi Kojima, who also turned out to be X on some New Japan show, so he just loves being X. And they defeated Shuji Kondo and Hiroki in 9 minutes and 33 seconds. So, you know, a fun little opener, obviously. I think we need to start calling him Satoshi X Kojima. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> like Shelton X Benjamin. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. And then the next day, Yokohama Radiant Hall was just like full Noah show. There's not much to go over, except the main event was a 30-minute draw. I thought it was good, but if you don't have 30 minutes, you don't have to see it. Uh, not surprisingly, I actually thought the best part of the match were not the Keno and uh, Kojima uh, exchanges, but the Kiyomiya and Nakajima stuff I thought was the highlight of that match. Dylan, did you have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, this was a really good match, I thought. Yeah. You know, these two teams uh, worked so well together, and I, I was happy to see it as well because – in this case, I was really worried about how were they going to handle this? Because it feels like you have some guys who 
maybe doghouse isn't the right word for Kaito, but they really haven't done a great job of making him seem like a top tier star. And Nakajima, he has been in the doghouse <laughs> lately. So I was wondering what they were going to do with this. And it turns out they just kept everybody equally strong pretty much. And I really liked how they did that. The wrestling was obviously top tier. Uh, you see, uh, I, I think Kaito, he's such a great wrestler to me in every way in the ring. I think he has, he's such an all around talent. He to me is up there with like your Takeshita level. And we saw that last, even last year, the tag match that they had, uh, that they were very similar. And here you could see a match like this where, and Kojima, you know, we all like him. He's very good. He had a really good match with Go at Cyberfight Fez, but I think Kaito is at a different level than him in just purely in ring at this point. I think that Kaito really helped make this match go along with both Keno and Nakajima. I thought they did a great job, but yeah, I have to say Nakajima, whatever thoughts we may have on uh, Cyberfight Fez and how that went down and a lot of heat was on him and everything. He wrestled really strong here. He, did, he didn't let it hold him back any because he, nope. I thought he had some really phenomenal exchanges here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's this is his like first real big match since Cyber Fight Festival where he's been able to shine like this. And of course, he's still got it. Not surprisingly. <laughs> they they need to let him do more because he's a, a really tremendous talent. But, but and Kaito as well. I hope that they find something for them to do. And with N one coming up, you think at, at worst, whatever's gonna happen, they're gonna have a lot of really good matches because I, I think they're two of the top talents in all of Japan, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And then we also and Ken, had... Keno, and Keno and Kojima are very good too. I, I love them as well. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of digging some of their feuding, like attacking yeah. each other in the back and everything is funny. I think yeah, Keno absolutely. is just like the master of that right now. He's he's really like, I don't know, vibing for lack of a better term, like between this and I enjoyed the the, the, the silliness of the Daisuke Sasaki like press <laughs> conference stuff and everything like that too. He's a guy to me that I think he's another one. I feel like, here's the thing. He was always great to me as a wrestler I, I was watching him in, in michinoku pro uh shout out fujita junior hayato who just made a successful return in m pro uh right now from his cancer uh, scare that lasted so long and nobody thought he'd wrestle again it was amazing but keno's was most known to me and to a lot of fans as feuding with him in michinoku pro he had the long black hair back then uh you know and i knew then that hey this guy's a special talent and when he came into noah the first time i was like wow they, they actually brought him in that's awesome and over the years, he's grown a lot. I think he's a guy, when he won the title, when he was actually champion, I was obviously really happy for him as a wrestler. But I think that the character they had for him, it wasn't good. Like, it was kind of similar to what he did now, but not as fleshed out to where it made him seem more like a baby. That <laughs> He was so angry, the more so than a threat. And I think now, as the years have gone along, he's been able to carve this character out, which is so unique to where he's not just a great wrestler, but he's really become one of the best characters in wrestling, in my opinion, from on the mic. Remember when they were doing the stuff with New Japan at the beginning of the year? He yeah. was like the unofficial spokesman of the company, pretty much. And that's something that you never probably would have thought of him coming into the company, where he's got this charisma, he carries himself well, he knows how to get himself around in any situation. Like you said, even in a comedy match, that was something a lot of people loved. And now he's going for the title. And like you said, he's such a fun character to watch in addition to his wrestling that it's just awesome so we have to give Keno show this man some praise right now he deserves it yep and then the semi-main event Go Shiozaki defeated Shuhei Taniguchi in 13 minutes and 47 seconds with the Goan Lariat uh fun match I mean I think both of us uh, agree that there's more to get out of uh Taniguchi as sort of like a mid-card bruiser type instead of like you know funky express opening match guy unabashed longtime Tanaguchi respector has entered the building right now because I've always said he that gimmick of uh, Maybach Tanaguchi really ruined him in the eyes of a lot of fans I think because as at any time he's just himself he's been a great wrestler go back a couple of years ago when he was teaming I like him and Sugera had a match uh, with Hideki uh, and someone, I think Kaito was involved. They mixed the match somehow, but it was a really great match. He was working Kideki's style really well. I was so impressed by him. He could do power stuff. Uh, he teamed with Marfuji and had a lot of great tag matches back then a few years ago. It's like you can put him in all kinds of different situations, and he really makes the best of it. I, I thought this was a really strong match. And Go, I mean, 
again, top tier wrestler in the ring to where he could have a great match with anybody. I thought it was a really good match for a semi-main event, and I, I definitely enjoyed it. Like you said, there's a lot to get out of him. Funky Express, like King King Tani, you know, Kobashi was right to criticize that. Okay, <laughs> let's just let's just be real. He dis, he let down Kobashi, and I can't forgive him for that but I can't appreciate his wrestling. And, and maybe one day, I don't know about you, Gerard, but I believe in redemption. And this man is on the path to redeeming himself with matches like this. Absolutely. And they're giving him a shot. I ex- kind of expect since they pulled him out of Funky Express that he'll be in the end one. That, I'd love to see that. Yeah. It just makes sense. He's a guy that can take a bunch of falls too. Yeah, I totally agree with that. To me, he's on a very similar level to a Soya, so to speak, to where... He's probably not going to get pushed anytime soon, but for a well, mid card, this is a it, push compared to what he was doing before. Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, what he was doing before was at the bottom of the card. But so yes, he's definitely improved from there. But he's not somebody that's like anybody believes he has he has future championship aspirations. I, I don't think if, if you're if you're realistic. But as a mid card gatekeeper, he could still be very valuable to the company. And be a guy that you could feud with. Like, say they face off an N one, and say Inaba beats him, that would mean something. Like, that would be a, a step forward, and they would probably have a great match. Oh, for sure, definitely. And then, so then we had Takashi Sugera, Hideki Suzuki, and Timothy Thatcher defeating Michael Elgin, Masakita Mia, and Yoshiki Nomura in eighteen minutes and forty seconds. When Thatcher made Kitamiya submit to the uh, Fujiwara armbar. Uh, this obviously is going to set up a tag title match at Budokan. Um, yeah, pretty good match, I think, all things considered, given the talent involved and everything like that. Maybe a l- couple minutes too long, but I don't know. It, it, I kind of expected a little more out of this, but it was fine to me, I think. Really cool to see Thatcher get the win. Uh, yeah. I will say that. Oh, I hope Thatcher and Hideki win the title so bad. <laughs> like th- th- This is my favorite tag team in the world right now. I don't care that they just started. This is what I wanted. This is this shows you how terrible WWE is a company. They had these two together and didn't put them in a tag team. What were they thinking? This, I don't this, think Kadeki even wrestled a match in WWE. He stood outside the ring a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did do that. But yes, there was very little wrestling and a lot of standing outside of the ring, which to me is not the best use of Hideki Suzuki. But that's just me. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do here. But I do know that him and Thatcher as a tag team this is my jam. Like, th- this is what I want to see in wrestling. This is what I want it to be. I want them to win the titles. You know, Elgin and Kita Mia, they're, like, I get where they're going, big guy tag team, but I feel like we've been around the block with Kita Mia for so many times. And Elgin, will they really, do they really want to put him as a main event, like, title guy? Well, look, they, I think they want to. And whatever you want to say about Elgin, let's just bracket that. And I don't think you were ever much of a fan. Yeah, I never liked him anyway. So, so, yeah. I did, but I think he's regressed. He hasn't really shown much in Noah other than if just doing some power spots. Yeah, but that's his role at the end of the day is like power forwarder. Uh, You know, so, I mean, it's it's, that's a very simplistic role, but they've they've done it. I don't even think he's doing it as well as he was in New Japan. That's a good point, too. Yeah, you're, and when he came into New Japan, he was like a more of a fresh-faced uh, guy to a lot of the viewers as well. So I, I can see that. Um, you know, the fans, w- will they get behind him in Japan? I'm sh- they, they gave a positive response to him. Oh, he, he has was, his uh, fans in Japan. Yeah, exactly. They gave, they gave a positive response to him in Japan at first. I do think, too, that Noah is very committed to the, the foreigner deal. Yeah. <laughs> like we've, seen, we've seen that many, many times over. Too, I mean, I have to say, overall, I think the this, the guys they brought in have done a pretty good job. Like for you know, for for the most part, like your Gotchas, your Thatchers, um, you know, even Dupree and EO Dr. Winder Jr. have done a good job. I would say for for the most part, and Elgin in the, his spot, you know, he gives you what you want. Like that's his role is to be the power forwarder, and he does do that. I agree with you that he's probably not as good as the New Japan. Again, I was never a huge fan of his to begin with, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but I can see why they would want him as that. I just think title guy, like champion, I, I don't know if that's a really a good spot for him. Even in Japan, I feel like that's a, a step too far. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do. It feels like they're committed. And I just feel like with Kitamiya, there's been so many stop-start pushes Something like Hideki and Thatcher has more upside to me than this Elgin and, and Kitamiya tag team. If they're going to push Elgin, it would be more of a singles guy. Yeah. Anyway, 
Yeah. Well, well, we'll get to that match in a minute then because we're going to preview yeah. the Budokan. So we'll go next yeah. was uh, he owed to Dr. Wagner Jr. defeating Manabu Soya in nine minutes and 37 seconds. The Wagner driver, like you were saying, like Soya is a good little gatekeeper here. I thought this was fine. Um, you know, they went out and wrestled a couple to 10 minute match. I mean, I think Wagner has definitely improved since the whenever he first showed up in Noah, what, 2017, 2018? Yeah, you know, I, I remember when he first came in because I'd, I'd seen him a lot before just watching Lucha Libre. Um, and I was like, ah, he's not very good, actually. <laughs> um, but for some reason, when he came into Noah, I think he actually fits the Noah style better than Lucha style for whatever reason. And I think he's been a pretty fair asset overall. It's not like I'm saying he should, again, be a title contender. Or right. Oh, I think he's, it, well, I was going to say, yeah. I think he's better as a tag worker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, he's a, a fine t- mid-card tag worker would yeah. be about where I, I would have him, which is better than he was in, in Mexico, like I said. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I would say so. You know, uh, you know, Dr. Wagner Jr., he's a, a good worker in the mid-card. Soya, obviously a good power guy, yeah. like mid-card dude. So uh, the match was fine. Again, it's not going to light up, you know, anybody's match of the year awards, mm-hmm. but it was a fine mid-card match. Well, I, since I have you on here, let's have some get wild respect. I am wearing a yeah. Takao Mori's X Bomber t-shirt right yeah. now. So it says we, Wild Heart. So we have to also respect Soya. And, you know, if if Soya used the the Get Wild theme, I would respect him a lot more. I feel like he's <laughs> he's, and that's the thing. That's the one flaw of this show is that Get Wild was not in the opening. I've, I've criticized you for this, and I will take my time to do it now. <laughs> so so feel feel free to edit this out if you like. But still, I will I will fight for Get Wild. I'm the well, ultimate Get Wild respect. You know, I feel at some point we might have to edit out one of the themes or something. <laughs> So that's so, how okay. So you're you're announcing right now, like let's say somebody gets signed to a WWE or something, right? AEW. Or someone retires. Yeah, or somebody retires. You will you you keep that option open that you will remove a theme. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, or what if somebody maybe, changes theme songs? Maybe that too. I don't think though any of those themes are changing. No, no probably not. But we'll see. I, I, pretty much the entire. I mean. I, I do love the opening though, because all of the ones you picked were actually pretty cool, <laughs> like a lot of the themes. But so I don't think any of those are going to be changing anytime soon, to be honest with you, or, or anyone will re- retire in the opening. So it would be well, interesting. Well, Mudo's theme's in there, so. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 you're that's right. That's what I meant by retirement. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? have, it'll be like, we'll, have, we'll give Mudo six months after retirement before removing the theme, just in case, right? Yes, that's true. Or you, or what if he comes back with one of his other, what if he comes back with, like, trans magic as, as a theme? Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you, then what will you do <laughs> in there? Or he can come back to New Japan and bring back his really old theme. Yeah, I don't know. Well, so, yeah, he will might be coming back to New Japan very soon, for all we know. Yes. Um, and then, so uh, second match on the show, Simon Gotch defeated Daiki and Nab in nine minutes and 55 seconds with a Gotch style pile driver. I enjoyed this. This was like a good, like 10 minute, like, you know, second from the bottom type mid card match. And like I said, like, I know you were really high on Gotch. I was less so, but you were right in the end. He's been a lot of fun in Noah. Yeah, I wasn't even really high at him going forward, more so like, oh, this guy's working a technical style. I want to see what he's going to do. And then I watched him wrestle, and I was like, hey, this guy's actually really good, <laughs> like, uh, pretty much. Because I'd seen him, I think, the last time I probably saw him was when he was in NXT, you know, the v- Vada Villains. Or well, whatever. see, it's funny, because I never was never an NXT watcher. And so I would have uh, seen yeah. him in MLW, which, you know, maybe not the greatest place to uh That's not a technical wrestling. Rate. Yeah, yeah. That's, not, that's not exactly, you know, uh, Frank Gotch is not in that promotion. <laughs> His yeah. name's in, or Carl Gotch. Who's he named after? Frank or Carl? I wonder. Uh, uh, probably Carl for the VOD villains because they're going way, way back. That would be Frank. No, not Carl. Sorry, Frank. Yeah. Yes. But Carl, the name works more in Japan. So it's perfect. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He, he's more over there. Uh, but yes, yeah, like you said, I, I could definitely buy that. But either way, whoever he's modeled after, I really enjoy his wrestling. I think he's been a great surprise on the tour. Because normally I'm somebody, again, I'm very hesitant on any like indie type of guys coming from America or, or Brit Res or anything like that. So I, I wasn't like, when he came in, I thought, okay, this is a, a technical guy named it for Gotch. What will he do? And then when I saw him wrestle, I was really impressed. And I was like, hey, is this guy like a dick or something? <laughs> like, because, you know, I don't know who's like a bad guy or something in, in wrestling in America or whatever. No, he's a bit of a rep. 
Oh, okay. Well, see, I didn't even know that. But uh, like, I didn't know if he was like a dick to everybody or what or something. But I just know his wrestling, and I was really impressed by it. And hey, Inaba to me, I think this guy. Not to spoil any of my awards for for my happier, I think he's right up there with the most underrated talents. I, I've thought about it for a long time. I was a really big fan of his in Wrestle One. And I think he's a guy that didn't get a lot of love there, you know, because obviously everyone would, would rally towards Ashino. And why wouldn't they? Ashino's awesome, obviously. Mm-hmm. But he's a guy that I always thought, man, this guy is a really good talent, totally deserving to be up there as a main event guy in Wrestle One and a fine champion. And I think a lot of people weren't as into him that much. And when he came to Noah, I thought he had a match with Kaito right away. They had a little bit of a deal going on with them. And I thought, oh, man, this guy's so good. They have to do something with him. And much like Okada in DDT, it's like he disappeared for, for a long time and didn't really do anything of note. But suddenly, the last little while, I think all year, really, he had that feud with Marafuji, which I thought was really well done. Yes, that was, he, definitely. Yeah, he performed, he performed great in. Uh, he's a guy I would love if, you know, if Kaito, if whatever they're going to do with Inamura, if they were just going to have Kaito as a tag team partner, I think him and Inaba, they had a little bit of a run in March too, and I think they'd be a great tag team uh, if they wanted to have, give them a run. I think he's a guy that they could be doing a lot more with. I, I think he has a ton of upside if they wanted to get behind him. Good look, good wrestling, like very talented, you know, great ability. I think he's a guy that doesn't get near enough love. And nobody talks about him ever as like any kind of really strong talent. And I think he's just uh, way underrated by a lot of people. Well, no, because they had him pegged as like the fall guy as soon as he got into Noah. Yeah, he, he's never got any kind of push really at, at all. You know, like you said, that's the closest he would get is being like the fall guy in the tag team. If they just gave him a bit of a run, I think he'd turn some heads uh, to maybe a lot of the fans, like especially the English speaking fans. I I think if he got a run and people could get invested in him, he's a guy that I think a lot of people would start talking about and be like, whoa, (laughs) like where where did he come from? Yeah, it's sort of funny because Ashino got all this attention for how All Japan botched him, but no one said anything about Inaba and Noah. Even in Russell One, he didn't get a lot of love. Well, I, 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 champ, but fair enough, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, but among the fans, I think like the in the small amount of fans that Russell One had, I think pretty much everybody would talk about, oh, Ashino's great. But when Inaba was champion, nobody pegged him as like anything special. And I always thought, oh, he's really good. And I think that he's a guy that deserves a lot of respect or more respect than he gets. Yeah, definitely. And the opener was just Funky Express, Mohamed Yone, and Akatoshi Saito defeating Atsushi Kotoge and Kimio Okada. 12 minutes and 11 seconds when um, Yone pinned Okada on, with the muscle buster. We've talked about this before. I love Okada, and I don't know what's going on with him. So, Hey, can I shout out? Uh, we, listen, we need to give some respect right now. Uh, shout out to Paul Vosh. We're doing this for you, buddy, because I remember you said the great Okada factions that they went to New Japan, Okada Kenya and Yusuke Okada, if they joined Kazuchika in New Japan, that's the greatest faction idea that has ever been said, and I totally agree with it. Okada's because, alliance. Yes, the oh yes, the Okada alliance. Uh, that's a, that's one faction that is set in stone. You, it's a very specific mindset you have to be in. But much like you, he's a talented performer, and much like Yusuke, he wasn't doing anything aligned. We saw Yusuke get that win. Can Kenya be next here? No one needs to take some pages from DDT, from their sister company, realize they have somebody great on their hands with Kenya and do something with him. But he's a guy that, again, when he first came in, I always liked him. And I feel like he got overshadowed by Inamura for a long time. And I was saying, man, he's got a lot to him, too. Don't forget about him. And he was injured for a little while, but he came back and has really grown into a really good in-ring performer. But again, another guy, even, even more so than Inaba, he just has no semblance of anything important going on or push. He's always in the same role, and it feels like he's stuck on this treadmill. And I don't know how they're going to really get him out of this with how they book usually. You, the best hope we could have is that he's in, he is also in, in one, because I think if you could give him just that one big singles match, he's another guy that's going to really turn some heads if you give him a shot. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. He just needs the chance, and I'm pretty confident that he will deliver. So that was Sunny Voyage at Yokohama Radiant Hall. Okay, so we'll run down the Nippon Budokan card really quick. I think this is the full card now that's out. Opening match, Daisuke Hirata, Atsushi Kotoge, Yohei and Extreme Tiger versus Suji Kondo, Tadasuke, Hajime Ohara, and Hiroki. Looks good. 
I don't have much to say other than that. I mean, yeah, just like this random. Is to get everyone on the card, yeah. basically, these first couple matches. Because the next one is Masaki Mochizuki, Shuhei Tanaguchi, Yoshiki Inamura, Deki Inabe, and Kinyo Okada versus El Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr., Rene Dupree, Simon Gotch, and the debuting Stallion Rogers and Anthony Green. I'll say this. I've never seen Stallion Rogers wrestle before. I didn't see him in NXT or anything like that. Anthony, Anthony Green, I've seen him. He's a fun little worker on the indies. I don't know if he'll fit into Noah. Yeah, I don't know anything about these guys. Okay. Uh, to be to be honest with you, I just uh, hopefully they can, like you said, hopefully they can find some way to fit in. Even though you don't sound very optimistic, so yeah, I will I take. Mean, your... I, I've never seen Rogers. I like Green. I just don't think it's necessarily something that fits in with Noah. This is a very hodgepodge team, too. They're, yeah, they're in. I mean, even if they were, I don't think this is the match where they'll be able to show it. Yeah. And unfortunately, it looks like there's been a back, like there's visa issues going on in Japan because Willow Nightingale was off the um, uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Show. And I was listening. And so now Chris Woodray is off this show because of visa issues. And I was listening to an interview on post wrestling with Filthy Tom Lawler. And he said that he got his visa the day of the announcements for the G1. So it's not really surprising that the visa office is sort of like overwhelmed now that everyone can get back into the country and is trying to process everybody's visa applications. So instead of COVID taking people out, I suspect there will be some other visa casualties, unfortunately. So instead, we got Yoshinari Ogawa and Yuya Susumu versus Aita and K- Kotaro Suzuki. That's a step down. <laughs> Big yeah, down. that's that's not great, uh, I would say. But, you know, maybe they'll be motivated to, to have a, a big match here. Uh, a stinger, anti-stinger bias heavily in effect right now with me. But uh, regard, regardless, hopefully they can have a, a good... I mean, these opening matches, just like you were saying earlier, it feels like just getting guys on the card and trying to swing things the best they could with the visa situation here. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, we've got Ninja Mac versus the debuting Dante Leon. Uh, I've never seen a Dante Leon match. I like Ninja Mac, though. And I think Ninja Mac obviously like killed it in his previous other Noah matches, got hugely over, got people with like Ninja Mac signs after his first appearance. But uh, I, I've heard mixed things about Dante Leon. I don't know. Have you ever seen him? Uh, I don't know anything about him. I just know that Ninja Mac looked really good when he was in the, like you said, his very first appearance. He really stood stood out. I mean, I thought that was a spectacular match that he had. It got very over with the fans right away. And he's a guy you could do a lot with. Uh, Leon, I will say this, unlike the other guys, they must see something in him because there's a reason he's in this singles match instead of your Stallion Rogers and Anthony Greens of the world in that random match. Yeah, well, I think he's a high flyer from my understanding. I'm pretty sure he is because he's in like GCW scrambles and everything like that. But I'm presuming those other guys are not. No, 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 they're not. Okay. They're like heavyweights, I think, or like, you know, or not. They don't necessarily wrestle like a junior style type thing. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have some kind of uh, crazy spot fest match. That's what I suspect it will be. I just, I know that there's a lot of people that don't like Leon, but I mean, maybe I don't, you know, we'll have to wait and see before I can give you an opinion on this. My uh, U.S. Indies watching is, is spotty. Um, and up next, I guess we get, I guess this is the business end of the card. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts about this match, Dylan. Hardcore match, Rob Van Dam and Masato Tanaka. I should add Team ECW versus Nosawa Wrong Guy and Super Crazy. Uh, first of all, this is a Nosawa fantasy match. Uh, and I'm sure he'll be doing the job, getting pinned by Van Dam. Um, this could get pretty ugly because, like, what, what, like it's wrong. I mean, I thought Van Dam looked fine in his um, day, his Noah match, but like, how the hell are like Nassau and Super Crazy supposed to hold their end of the match together? It's just man, I, I miss the days when Nassau was fired from this company. <laughs> they that lasted like five minutes, but still, but regardless, uh, I wish that would happen again, so we wouldn't have to see this match. But unfortunately, that my dreams cannot come true. They cannot last. And we now we get this ECW crap on uh, Noah. You know, RVD, here's the thing. I get it that he has some nostalgia, you know, to, to the English speaking fans. And he did all of his stuff. It's like, you know, he he played the hits, as they would say. 
and did it pretty effectively. You know, obviously he's older. He's not going to be flying all over the place, you know, like he used to. But he did everything you wanted him to do, and it was about the best you could expect out of him. Tanaka, obviously a, a veteran player, and you know what he's going to bring to the table. You know he's going to be diving off uh, on Nosawa, put him through the table on the outside. There's probably going to be some kendo sticks. Who knows what Nosawa and Super Crazy uh, are going to do. Like you said, it just this is such a weird match that's just so embarrassing to run never mind ecw never mind rvd even because it's so obvious that this guy he's booking for an audience of one which is himself and it's just stupid and so i i have no positive thoughts on this at all the only thing i could say about it is that it's good to see tanaka get a continued run in a bigger company i was watching zero one not that long ago and I mean, well, to be fair, that show we just talked about in, in Radiant Hall was pretty small. The, yeah. it, it was a zero one esque show, I would say, there. But it's good to see him get some love on a, a Wrestle Universe product of any kind. Uh, that, that's as nice as I will say. And you know, and I'm sure, like I said, if you're a, a longtime fan of RVD, you'll get he will do what he should do as well as he could. It seemed like he's very motivated. Definitely a lot better than uh, TNA R, RVD. Yeah, no, I like last time I think it was 2019, he was in Impact and he didn't look very good. He's, I mean, he posted all these pictures of him like doing all these intense workouts. So he, I will give him credit. He like got himself ready to come to Japan. And he deserves credit for that. Yeah. And it sounds like he will be hanging around a while because uh, Masato Tanaka sounds like he has stole a lot of ECW uh, nostalgia and may have uh, suggested him to come in and everything like that. So. And when is this going to end? I don't know. <laughs> this is Look, coming. you know, honestly, if you replace Super Crazy with someone that was like a good worker, I think this could be fine. It just depends on how far they go with the hardcore stuff. Yeah. Uh, what kind of plan that, you know, if you're going to take a positive take on this or positive slant, it's something different, at least on, on, on the card. It gives you a mid card match. It's, it's not like it's a main event or anything like that. No. For, for a mid card hardcore match, you know, you can't, I can't get too upset about it, even though it is my mortal enemy, ECW, <laughs> coming in here. But in, in all seriousness, I think that it's not for me, but it is at least something different. And I will give them credit for the variety, even though I feel like they lean a little. And it's not just them, though. That's a, I think that's a big thing in Japan right now for a lot of companies, is that they lean way too heavily into the foreigner aspect of it. And it makes sense because of the timing of it. I just think a lot of the guys they're bringing in I don't know if they're like guys you can really do a lot with. Oh, right. And the like grand I, scheme of things. I would have, well, I would have, if I were no, I'd be bringing back foreigners, but I would have just focused on a couple. Yeah, exactly. Like your Thatcher and like maybe Wagner and, well, I'm not, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think they should have brought in Algon for many reasons, uh, but. Uh, yeah, like bring Thatcher, you know, Dupree and Wagner as the tag team. They had the story and maybe Gotch as well. He did. Yeah, some yeah, yeah. Stuff. Like four, but they got too many. And, and especially going out online and being like, we want headhunters or, or what do they say? Bounty hunters or yeah. something like that. That was like really cheesy in, in my opinion. Like very, you know, we, we're just desperate for anybody to come over <laughs> right now. That's kind of what the I just feel like they could be more discerning and like, you know, like, I don't know. Are they sitting down and watching indie tapes of these these guys? I, would, I feel like I, I feel like I need on. to send a tape in. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, maybe that may not pass by uh, up there, but no, like you know, it's just too many guys, like you said, yeah. ultimately. Well, and I think I mean, they, they come across. I too. think they, there's, yeah, like you know, if I had like, I think there's talent on the U.S. Indies right now that are better choices than some of the people that they're bringing in, for example, even. I just, I'm not like particularly like enamored with their like choice, even, even regardless of how many, if you think it's too many, there's better choices as far as I'm concerned. And it feels like the way they're doing it is they're asking people to come to them pretty much. It's not like they're scouting the Indies. They're just saying, hey, send us your tape, send us your picture, send us yeah. your info. And we, like, you know, when they found some numbers they liked, and maybe they were just ready to go on some people. I, you know, we don't know for sure how their selection process works. I have a works. bad feeling that Elgin might be slipping them <laughs> ideas. <laughs> you know, well, we can only speculate on that, but we can yeah, we can exactly. hope that that's not true. But yeah. you know, it, it just it just seems like a weird vibe with the foreigners they're bringing in right now. It just feels like, hey, we'll take anybody that just applies to us or or somebody recommends us. But yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see going forward. 
And then uh, Goshi Ozaki, Takashi Sugera, Kazuyuki Fujita versus Masakatsu Funaki, Na- Kasuhiko Nakajima, and Manabu Soya. I mean, it'll be a good match. Uh, like, you know, I mean, I love, I think Noah does the, like, the heavyweight six-man tags the best, really, right now in wrestling. This could be a really good match. Yeah. I feel like all these guys can bring punishment. There's going to be a lot of hard hitting in this match. And that's what it needs to be. I think this is a great palate cleanser, so to speak, from the hardcore match because it's something super different. And all six of these guys are going to beat the hell out of each other. And it's going to be interesting. Uh, w- will Nakajima take the fall or Soya? I wonder. Um, well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I'm assuming it's Soya. I'm assuming Fujita's yeah. winning because I think they're, bre- yeah. they're they're building him up again. Like he's like, I'm going to be an opening match guy and work my way back up type thing angle that they're doing with him. So I would assume, but you never know. I don't know. It depends. Like I don't have a good feeling if how big of like if Nakajima's in the doghouse or how yeah. badly he's in sort of type thing, right? They yeah, because really, I was like that... done anything with him, but they haven't yeah, done that... anything humiliating either. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The lot, there was a lot of speculation on that, that he would have a lot of heat uh, in the company. It could for... just be a him of case of having to put over Endo in a singles match later, and that's all that happens. Yeah, that, that would be fair. And but I think I, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I would totally. hate to see him turned into a, like a jobber even for six months. I think that would be horrible. And, but even then, they, they were doing a good job of making him look bad even before that. <laughs> yeah. uh, re- remember, remember, he wasn't on that show originally yeah, exactly. until, uh, until Mara Fuji was injured. I mean, that's and, pretty far in the doghouse. And then he managed to know? come on the sh- and before he's on the show, he starts pissing everyone off with that Kotoge slap, which was apparently <laughs> yes. a shoot. And which was also, by the way, the most interesting thing to build up that whole show before <laughs> <Yes>. we're <laughs> going into it. Like, he immediately stepped in and became the main guy. You can make <laughs> the case that we should just let Nakajima go into business for himself all the time. <laughs> and, like, make a better Noah out of it. Well, that's an interesting way. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, you know, I mean, listen, he's taken his lumps. I mean, he had that big loss to Fujita yeah. in February, the, the match where Hideki laid on him for 10 <laughs> seconds uh, there in a row. Maybe, maybe he, he's just... That's all. It's all a long-term storyline we're building up to, and he's just going to start shooting on people going yeah. forward. But uh, no, I don't think that will happen. I think that, uh, you know, I think that this match will be really good at the end of the oh, day, regardless sure. of what happens. But Fujita, I agree with you. He, what whoever he pins, I think they're this is going to lead to Fujita getting the win. And then, quite possibly the most controversial match on the card: Pro Wrestling Love Forever, the final countdown: Keiji Muto versus Kaito Kiyomiya. Um, you know, I want to say Mudo wins, but like I, I'm 50 50 right now. Dylan, I'd like to hear your thoughts. No way, you're lying. There's no way Mudo loses this match. Oh, you're that confident? Okay, I would be stunned. Yeah, you're probably right, been, uh, especially like if if they built this up to be like the very last match of the series, I'd still think Mudo would win, but at least I think there's reasonable doubt. Him losing the first match of the series, it would be so radical to me that I, I can't even imagine it happening. But it, it could lead to some kind of interesting story, I guess, if, if they did that to him. Because, like, where do you go from there? Because they've advertised these five, maybe six matches or however many he wants to say uh, as his big final run, so to speak. So if he loses right away, how would that impact the rest of his uh his journey well, does it because he's like the biggest i mean he's technically whatever you want to say about him and i have very warm feelings of keiji Muto's career prior to his arrival in noah right, right. He, he is many people um, do yeah uh he's the biggest star currently wrestling in japan arguably i mean you can like i you know okada mate in naito right but like he's the biggest legend wrestling in japan right yeah, like, I would agree I don't with that. Think a, I don't think a, a loss hurts him. Yeah, you know, it just goes against his whole career wow. <laughs> virtually to, to put over Kaito here. Right. Uh, wow. yeah, especially this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a long, this is a longer story, but I will just quickly say this because we plan on doing some episodes about uh, retrospective about Mudo's career. Okay. But uh, as someone that has studied it extensively, Mudo will do the right thing when his backup is against the wall. Like he would put over people in all Japan because he had to, to keep like the business going. Yeah, so that, that, you, that, that, that's if, true. If you enable him like, like Nosawa and Shanshiro Takagi have, and I, and, and I think that's a fair word to use enabling. He'll do what he's done in Noah. Yeah. I mean, you're right about that. 
Uh, you know, we've even seen other wrestlers kind of talk about him that ultimately he's the thing that he is best at is getting himself over. Right. And we've seen even people like Tanahashi to say stuff like that uh, pretty much about him. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. But I mean, in that case, he has all the power in this yeah. situation. Like yeah. the, they, they want, they, want to, they like he's putting the butts in seats. And, and, and like it's easy to say that it doesn't hurt him, but at the end of the day, you're building to a really big match at the end of this series against yeah. the Tanahashi or who or whoever the last man is. Could it be uh, could, could it be Kiyomiya loses here and then faces Muto in the retirement ma- the final final match? I really don't think Kaito. Like I mean, I, I hate to say this because I love him so much. He's literally and when I was one of his biggest defenders because remember when he was champion, everybody was trying to be down on him. And say that he wasn't ready. I always said Kaito is a great champion and should be respected more. And you look at how things improved while he was champion. But the way things have gone the last year for him, I don't think he's that. He's a, like, look where he was in Cyberfight Fest, like in a kind of a nothing match at the end of the day. Uh, you know, he, he wasn't, he didn't have a big role. He doesn't feel like that star right now. So it, maybe if this is all part of some secret plan uh, to where they're building him up for six or eight months or whatever, and that that could be it. But I mean, right now, it doesn't feel like he's anywhere near to be ready to be that guy, that star guy. Yeah, because well, of I'm, them. I'm yeah, I'm probably naively holding out hope but, you know, by saying it's 50-50. I think most people I've talked to are, are you know, it's become a, a running joke at this point between them. So most people do expect Mudo to win here, so... Well, but if he wins, you you will look smart at the I, end of it. Well, I, I I looked like too much of a coward for not being like Kaido's winning. Yeah, yeah just just but yeah, don't hold back, Gerard. Okay, you know what? You you you've talked me into this because everyone else I've talked to is uh, Mudo's winning. I'm gonna say Kaito just so I can take a victory lap in case it does happen because I don't think any very few other people are saying it. So I'll say that's it. what I'm saying. Yeah, Kaito you wins. see, you're, that you are the you are the king of the mountain when it comes to. Uh, bold predictions right now with Kaito winning. I can be down for that. I hope you're right. I hope that we all look <laughs> foolish at the end and Muto suddenly his heart grows three times its size. Now, of course, he Kaito. now look if uh, if Muto's hip disintegrates and the, <laughs> the, the, there's a no contact or you know uh, Kaito wins by like referee's decision, I doesn't count. I say that. Why are you being so violent? So you want Nakajima to shoot on people? You're talking about <laughs> ref stoppages. Like, why, why are you being Look, so mean? Mudo not making it to these five matches is a real possibility. I, I, I don't want to be. A... I don't want to be like horrible or wish, but I mean, it's you know, it's not well, out he, of the he, realm of possibility. I, obviously, any logical person can see he's very backed up. It yeah. has a lot of injuries. Well, like Paul and I came and we even recorded like an extra thing on the end after we recorded when it came out that Mudo had that hip injury back whenever it was, when it was announced like February or, or whatever. And we suspected that this could very well be the end and it turned out to be the case. So I think you know. Muto will wrestle for years to come. Like, uh, okay. I know that that sounds crazy. Well, no, such many, a, you know, many people are, are, yeah. are you know, yeah, that, uh, I mean, I, like I said, because I know that he's hurting. I know he's injured, but he's such a he's a, such a wrestler's wrestler. <laughs> let's just say yeah. that I feel like he will find some way, and they and he they will pay him these companies. Yeah, maybe one day no one will stop, but he will always be able to find. Oh, there will some, be a money mark for him always, absolutely. Yeah, so so to me, I think his career has many ways to come. But let's play nice right now, and okay. let's say everything goes as it should. Who do you think would be good picks for him to wrestle on this uh, fi- final journey, uh, Pro Wrestling Love Forever, uh, final uh, countdown series? Tanahashi. They've already set that up, too, so that's a very obvious one. Right. Um, I'd like to see him at the Budokan in the All Japan 50th anniversary show, to be honest with you, in like a six-man. Listen, if Taru could be a, a guy they bring back, then, why sh- then Muto definitely mm, should be. Come on, he's a poor part of the company history yeah absolutely um, i i totally agree with you and that look show. i'm you know i'd like to see him in a match involving sting probably be obviously like a tag match maybe him and someone versus sting and darby or him sting and darby versus like a AEW team or something okay mox is trying to set that up <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, and while like New Japan executives <laughs> were at that uh, meeting yeah. or whatever, um, I and um, 
Well, I was going to say I'd like to see it go get his win back, but I don't think that's going to happen. You're an optimistic guy right now. <laughs> I feel like have I have I have I raised your spirits to be honest, big on the show because I feel yeah, I feel like maybe. you're a lot more positive. Well, right now, uh, you know, and maybe a like a legends multi man tag like Shiro Koshinaka and Fujinami. Who else is still active? Um, Maybe they could bring out Shono for for one more match. Double retirement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, and yeah. Oh, but I really like your Daichi idea. And that was the that was like the main one that I, yeah. I feel pretty. Like, I haven't seen anybody else say that. That uh, to me, that's a super obvious one. That would be very much a legacy match. You know, Daichi represents the spirit of your Chonos and obviously his dad. And it would be a huge match for him. Like the probably the biggest of his entire career. If he could face Mudo in a one on one match, even if he loses, I think that would be a big step up. And maybe it could be a way for him to uh, take a step, you know, forward in his career, I think, because he's in big Japan right now, which he, he's one of the main guys there. But I think he could have, uh, he could do more if he has a big match with Muto and really get a lot of eyes on him. Yep, definitely. And oh, I just thought of one. What about an NWO Japan reunion match? Yeah, now we're talking. We get Scott Norton, get Super J. <laughs> yes, NWO Sting. Hiro Saito still wrestling, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes he uh, pops up. Well, this could be quite a match you're, you're setting up. Tenzan and Kojima are still wrestling. That's true. Yeah, see, look at that. You've got a. Uh, you could bring a. Uh, maybe Kendo can can be there. The, all the guys who jumped with him to all Japan. Yeah, right. Kendo Kashin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's lots of options to do. I don't know. Um, we'll see where it goes. I mean, I think this match will shape how I feel about the rest of the retirement matches going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's It's going to be interesting to see. I, I personally don't expect a great match, but I, and like I said to me, this, I think I said this in my opinion, the Noah run just isn't that big. Uh, like I, in terms of his career, like he, he'll always be a new Japan guy, in my opinion. Yes. But he'll, he'll also be an all Japan guy before more you than even think about yeah, him. yeah yeah but much much more like i i think he's significantly like that period is he would have been in different. wrestle one longer <laughs> he'll be in wrestle one longer than he was in noah too and he was only halfway in wrestle one half the, half the time anyway yeah after, uh, especially uh, after the first year yeah like the first go around yeah it was you know first year or two he was there after that uh, and it was a little shaky but yeah like this noah run to me is like a blip on his career radar uh you know overall i mean yes he was the champion and that was noteworthy, but it's not like, for whatever you want to say, you could be a defender, love him, hate him, whatever. Um, it's not like he turned around the company with his title reign or anything like that. No. He, he, you know, he, he had, had a, done long-term damage to the company. Yeah, and that's much, much more likely. <laughs> like, he definitely didn't turn it around. And in a few years, we may be saying, wow, all of these losses Kiyomiya took was bad at the end of the day. But, I, you know, I'm not trying to hate on him or anything right now. I'm just saying that ultimately his run wasn't like some spectacular legendary run. It, like, popped his fans and maybe got a few more eyes it on Noah. It one Budokan show as far as yeah. I can tell. Yeah, exactly. And that was good. And like, that's cool. And maybe they got some more subscribers on, you know, Wrestle Universe for that. Yeah. I'm sure they did. But it wasn't like, you know, they were down in the dumps and then he showed up and now they're, uh, you know, <laughs> like now they're up to, ready to overtake New Japan all of a sudden. Right. It was like, a, at best, it was a good run, you know, at a kind of random time. And like you said, we also have to take into account what damage we could see in the future. And this match may not help it if, mm -hmm. if things play out how I, I feel like they will. But we'll see. And like I said, I think this being the first run, this feels like they threw a bone here. Uh, but like you said, it'll be interesting because as far as we know, they may just be like, look, because I do think that these matches are a drawing card going forward, uh, regardless of whatever we think personally about will, will he retire or will he not? I think they can build something special out of this series and each match will mean something. So for all we know, they might just have all Noah guys coming forward. It might be him go, you know, so somebody like that, maybe Masa. Uh, I don't think it's impossible that he doesn't win that title on this run either with, with <laughs> Kojima. Uh, Cause that feels like a natural match to set up him and, and Kojima yep. as a match. And that may be something part of New Japan's deal for all we know. You know, I, I know everybody speculates that Kojima will just jump to Noah, but who knows? They might not want Kojima to lose to any Noah guys. And then Muta, Muto is the one that they can, you know, bridge, so to speak, for that. Yeah, well, we'll see. So this will set the tone. So get, yeah, be, yeah. get ready, people. <laughs> you may either love it or hate it. I think it will uh, get strong reactions one way or the other. 
And, and that's then, what you get with him. I, that is one thing you always get. Some people will love him and hate him, and he got, will always get a reaction. We have to give him credit for that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's still one of my – I think I have number nine, ten. Uh, I, I did Alan's four Al's 100 greatest wrestlers list, and he's my number nine. Like, I, I really do love him, but I try not to think about the last couple of years. He's a legend. Like, whatever happens – if he has the worst matches ever on these last five matches or whatever – and wrestles for 10 more years and ruins his legacy, he'll still be one of the all-time greatest stars of, you know, of Japanese wrestling. There's no way you can deny that. Absolutely. And then so for the GHC Tag Team title, we got, as we mentioned, Michael Algin and Masa Kitamiya defeat, uh, defending against Hideki Suzuki and Timothy Thatcher. Um, I got to say, I see. Pro- I feel like they're going in with Algin and Kitamiya, so I'm thinking that they retain here. I think Maybe you have a different opinion. I'm just curious. What do you think? Do you think Suzuki and Thatcher can get something good out of these two? Yeah, I think that they, they're two of my favorite wrestlers in the world. Here's the thing, though. I don't think this is a great match stylistically, you know, because it's like you have the power guys, then right. you have Suzuki and Thatcher. I think Kitamiya may do some really good stuff, though, because uh, I'm wondering how they're going to really – what how they're going to work that dungeon lock into something like what what setup will they use for it to get that work i think either thatcher or hideki could do something great with yeah. that and it's going to make kitamiya look really cool when they do it uh, as i said i actually do think hideki and thatcher will win because i think that they're going to want to push elgin more as a singles guy going forward than a tag guy i feel like this tag run is more of a bridge that to the future and if they want to if they're serious and again i don't know how far you can go with elgin realistically even in japan like i just i like champion like i don't think he'll win the title no i think if, if they want to build him up as a title challenger they're probably going to build him up as a singles guy through the n1 and right. give him some big pushes there so i think to do that they'll focus a uh, hideki and thatcher more as a tag team and those guys they might not be an n1 i think you can make the case that they might not be so i think they're going to focus more on elgin as a singles guy and they'll lose the titles here to hideki and thatcher and okay. also i just re- i just really want hideki and thatcher to win, so I'll, make them, <laughs> I'll make up any reason for sure. why, why Absolutely. they would. go for it yeah but but that's at least pretty logical <laughs> no it does make sense yeah and then for the gsc junior title hayata versus seki yoshioka it's listed as being second from the top so i'm a little worried about it going i mean i think yoshioka is great and we were talking about that but it's still hayata and i'm concerned if you start giving him 22 24 25 minutes matches regardless of the opponent uh and i i hope yoshioka wins although i mean they just seem to love hayata so i don't know I, I would have to get down on my knees right now. I have a crisis of conscience, a conscience right now. Please, end this title reign. Please give us Yoshioka as champion. Please don't give us 25-minute Hayata matches anymore. Please. I can't take this, Gerard. I'm only human. How many times are we going to have to witness this man be champion? How long? He was champion like a year before this. And then they took him off for a month, and now he's champion again. And he's been for the last quarter of the year. When is this going to end? Hopefully on the show. <laughs> yeah. Like, even if they love Hayata. Like I said, I have my favorites, too. I, I, there are wrestlers that I like. But do they have to be champion all the time? Do they have to be the main guy overshadowing everybody all the time? Especially when, he, you know, he's Hayata at the end of the day. This is not... A legendary, I don't think many people view him as a legendary junior, yeah. regardless of how hard they pushed him. You know, even his biggest fans, I don't think we consider him like a Kenta, you know, or Mara Fuji when they were juniors. I don't think anybody would put him in that class, you know, or at least a remarkably small amount. So for me, let's reset this division. I've, I've been saying this for a while and it's probably not going to happen. But to me, I feel like the division as a whole needs a big reset and just some stability going forward where you have just something going on that we can all get behind something new. We can build Yoshioka up. I think he's as good of a champion as any. He did have that one month title reign beforehand and he won it at Budokan before, but then he left, then he lost it a month later. And I was one of those things where I was like, man, that's crazy. Why, why, why did they, why did he lose it so much so fast? But maybe they could tie that into something too. Yes, definitely. His, his, yeah. His one big win was at Budokan. Well, that's a good excuse to put the title back on him, as far as I'm concerned. We we can just make up any reason why. Oh, absolutely. He has better gear than Hayata. For sure. <laughs> He's better hair than Hayata. Yeah. 
So I think I think whatever listen, all the important factors side with Yoshioka right now. Let's just be honest about it. Definitely. And then so in the main event, we got Satoshi Kojima versus Keno for the GHC title. Kojima's looking to make his successful first defense. I have enjoyed the buildup to this. Keno has been great. The matches, like we mentioned, that 30-minute draw have been great. So I'm expecting good things from this match. I'm gonna say I think Kojima wins because. They might be saving that Kojima versus Muto GHC title match for one of Muto's other retirement matches. And it just feels like they're going in with Kojima for a while. Dylan, what do you think? I mean, in many ways, you could just say, just pull the trigger on Kenny. We feel so hot too. New Japan didn't send Kojima over to lose one month. Yeah, exactly. Ago. So, like, I mean, that, that, that's just case closed to, to me. Um, Keno's awesome. We all love him. Great performer. Just... It just doesn't feel, and, and I also think like this feud has been good and all, but remember not that long ago, he was kind of like bowing down <laughs> to Funaki and that was kind of his role. And even yeah. his last big match was a goofy comedy match with Sasaki. Not exactly, you know, it's not like he's coming off some huge win, even if you like that match and, you know, it wasn't like a star making performance or anything. It was just a, a very fun comedy match. So we are going from that to this. It just feels like to me every indication is that Kojima will win. But I do expect this to be a really strong match, though. Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to it personally. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm expecting good things from the match. I really like the buildup, and Kojima can still go. I mean, we were talking about Akiyama and uh, Nagata, and I feel like he's obviously still. And it's kind of incredible because he, he blew out his knee, what, two years ago? Two, three years ago? Yeah, it wasn't that long. And he, and he missed his final G1. But he's can still wrestle at a. He just feels like he can move a lot faster than Nagata and Akiyama at this point, which is sort of interesting given how bad an in, in, uh, injury that is and at such an age to have it. So yeah, I'm expecting great things from the match anyway, definitely. So that's Noah. And before we move on to All Japan, we have to talk about Hello Fresh. And with Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. Uh, It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do you get the the ingredients come pre-portioned so you're not over buying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family friendly or quick and easy recipes you can customize your favorite dishes with the new hello custom offerings by swapping out one protein or one side for another upgrading for a more luxe experience or even adding protein to a veggie meal that means more choices more variety and more meals truly tailored for you i'm not so much a picky eater but i have several picky eaters in my family so i know what that is like and dylan did you not order some hello fresh using the code that you got off of this very show listen gerard you are a longtime member of the eastern lariat family and when you're a member of the family i support the sponsors when, when you want me to so yes i did in fact order hello fresh before and i did not only do they send you the stuff uh in the you know they send it to you in the mail all the ingredients are there even like the fruits and the vegetables i uh, come with it too uh but not only do they send you the food but they'll send you these cards that show you exactly how to make this food that you get which is very interesting because if you didn't who knows i could have burnt down my entire apartment complex but thankfully they've told us uh, they've given us the instructions and you, you know you can make everything you want i ordered uh, i think one of my favorite dishes was the uh curry the chicken curry that they uh, had there and it was very good it had all the rice all the seasonings uh very high quality stuff and i got my whole family to try it even nanny happy birthday nanny 85th birthday was just a, a week ago and she tried it and she liked it herself and she is a, a long time cook southern girl uh grandpa ken uh, eastern larry fans know him he was a cook for 40 years and he approved as well so if you're getting the nod of approval from them you know you did something right. And you, oh, wow. uh, yeah, that's real facts right there. I would never lie about that. Uh, but a lot of good ingredients and a lot of great, good meals too. They have a lot of variety of stuff you can get, whether it's some pasta. I tried that. I had some chicken pasta too. Uh, they had there. It was really good. I have the cards uh, still too. And that's the thing. They say if you give a man a fish, 
you feed them for a night. But if you teach them how to fish, you feed them forever. And they give you the ingredients and how to make them. So if you, they give you the cards, you keep them and you can make them yourself afterwards. Awesome. So that's go to hellofresh.com slash VOW16. That's all one word and use code VOW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's hellofresh.com slash VOW16 and use code VOW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So we now move on to All Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, We're coming up on two hours. So I'm going to quickly go over these shows on the 25th and 26th, just to see, just to say on the 25th, I thought the um, main event of Jake Lee, Yuma Aoyagi, and Atsuki Aoyagi defeating Kento Miyahara, Shiro Koshinaka, and Rising Hayata was a lot of fun. Uh, Jake pinned uh, Hayata with the D4C in that match. And then I thought Suwama and Shuji Kondo uh, defeating Yuji Nagata and Dan Tamer was also a lot of fun because when you sub out Shuji Kondo for Taru, you get quite a different match. Yes, that's very, very obvious to say. I also want to put over there, uh, there was a match on there where it was uh, Honda and Ashino yes, versus I was Amori get to it. Yes, that was uh, awesome too. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, Paul picked on the award show uh, Omori and Kodama as his tag team of the year. And I actually went with the Magical Sugar Rabbits, but I think that was a really smart pick from him because, hey, they got, they like right on January 2nd had that banger of a match against T Hawk and Al Lindemann and have delivered. Oh, I love that match. Yeah. And pretty much delivered uh, since then. So, like, yeah, they are a sneaky tag team of the year, really, because they've actually been a tag team the entire half year, unlike some other teams in all Japan. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that, that's true they have they have some issues with that but uh that's a good match and honda and ashino they've definitely stumbled upon something here uh, i think they have a great future as a team i was really skeptical of breaking up runaway suplex at first but so was i yeah yeah and, and i still don't love how we got there but honda and ashino they're they're going to be a great team and i really enjoy them that was a really great match i thought and what I thought was one of the most interesting parts of the show is they drew 853 fans in Kurobe for this, which I thought was a hell of an attendance for a show outside of Tokyo. Um, it shows the draw of Koshinaka, I think, in the main event. We, we have to give it up to him. Well, I think it's just the draw of, of probably wrestling in the city for <laughs> yes, that's the first time in a while, probably, which is why these companies need to get the hell out of Tokyo for a bit. Oh, we all need that too. And, uh, you know, uh, Hikaru Sato wrestled Rio Inoue on there. Yes. Uh, we, we need to bring up Inoue. I love this guy so much. I, he's another one. He's like when Okada debuted. I pegged him right away for stardom, and I think Inoue is right on that same path. He's already got the purple. He looks unique. He wrestles just awesome. And I think he's a guy that everyone is going to really love if they don't already. Oh, for sure. I mean, I gave him my rookie of the half here. I know several of my colleagues on the panel went with uh, Fujiwara from Dragon Gate, and uh, I know that uh, he has been having a good um, run and including a decent run in Mexico from uh, what I've heard. But uh, I had to show some love to Inoue because I think he really deserves it. He, he, he is uh, very good. Fujiwara is very good, but I definitely... I will side with Inoue uh, as a Inoue respector. The last show to be uh, in uh, Toyama or Kurobe was uh, all the way back in 2020, uh, October, and it was this very company that did it, and okay. they did and they did 242 fans at the time. Wow! Uh, remember, this was I think right when the pandemic was like really big uh, yeah. too, in, in late 2020. So there was a lot of restrictions. Who do you think was in the main event? I bet you Koji I- Iwamoto. He was, that's right. And Zeus this was, was this was Jin era going going here. So Koji had... Iwamoto, Jake, and, and Abe. No, Ryuki Honda was the third man on the team, and they faced next stream, uh, Yuma, Atsuki, and Kento in the main event. Zeus was in a singles match. Who did Zeus face in the singles match? Since, since you mentioned about this, is a very fun person. Black Manso Ray, Chikara. <laughs> <laughs> The natural person to be in there. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, good show, I thought. 
Um, also, Takao Mori and Yoshitatsu versus Shuji Ishikawa and Ren Abe. We might as well just mention it because it's the only one we haven't mentioned at this match. And also, Izanagi versus the Hughes build as Toyoma Black Menso Ray, I think, obviously, for the local purposes. And they went to a time limit draw in 10 minutes. The booking of this is bizarre because they're also challenging for the All Asia tag titles coming up. It's just, I don't know. Toyama Black Mensa Ray, huge draw confirmed yeah. is what I take from that. Possibly. So good on all Japan for that. And then we go the next day in Kobe in K in beautiful KBS Hall. 431 fans, which I also think is a fairly respectable number at, for them at this point. Um now this show opened with Atsuki Oyagi versus Hikaru Sato going to a great time limit draw, 10 minutes. As because I was kind of thinking, who I wonder who's gonna win this because. I don't think Sato's going to lose this, but I think they're sort of protecting Aoyagi. And, well, they went to a draw, and it was great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, Again, it's something I'm very well known for is my love for Hikaru Sato. I think he is one of the best wrestlers anywhere, pretty much. And he continues to prove that with the matches like, like this here, which is very good. Like you said, Aoyagi, they're definitely really on board with him. I definitely think he is a guy that the, they're build, building for in the future. Obviously, I didn't love Sato losing the title uh, just because of the emotional circumstances, but I, I figured it was going to happen with Tiger Mask coming in. New Japan doesn't send their guys in to lose, so I prepared for it mentally. Uh, but now, thankfully, even without the title, he's having these banger opening matches with people like Inoue and Aoyagi. So if he's in that role, I'm all for that. Have Sato come out every show in a singles match, I, I could get behind that all day because he's two for two on this tour, and this one especially was very good. Yeah, well, he's got a... I, uh didn't put this on here, but on July 9th, he has a singles match against Suwama. Good. So that'll be interesting. Let him go over. <laughs> well, Th- that probably won't happen. But <laughs> but uh, uh, just don't have him join Voodoo Murder, because that's all I ask. But will they? Because he would make a very good partner for Hijikata if they wanted to yes, do that. Yes, that would be... Uh, uh, well, Minoru Tanaka should be his partner. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so leave Sato out of this. Tanaka has sacrificed his, his good wrestling to be in Voodoo Murder. So we oh, can't right. lose Sato. My mistake. It's not Mensa Ray and um, Izanagi challenging for the all these tag titles. It's Toshizo and um, Minoru. Yeah. Yeah. Minoru, yeah. of course. We cannot. He's lost his last name in, in Voodoo Murders. Yeah. Uh, but and yes. So, uh, uh, next match, I'm just going to shout it out because Isa 8 yeah. was on it and I love that guy. Okay. And Yoshi Tatsu and Isa 8 defeating Takao Mori and Ryo Inoue with uh, Yoshi Tatsu pinning um, Inoue with a running neck, neck breaker drop. So Yoshi Tatsu's gone from cosplaying as Antonio Noki to uh, cosplaying as Giant Baba. It gives him a spot on the card. What value that has, I'm not sure. I don't know. Exactly. Well, I mean, look, he's he's just in these like first and second matches, so I'm fine with that for Yoshi Tatsu these days. <laughs> He's fine. Like he, he's not even that bad, honestly. Like the only time he sucks is when he was doing that Enoki stuff, like you said. Right, but I <laughs> think he needs like at a certain. There was for a while where I thought he they had him too high up on the card. Yeah, but you know, every once in a while he put off like a really good match. You know, like, against so, Suwama of all people too. Yeah, yeah, or or Kento. Yeah, Kento too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, like the main guys, he would he would step up when the time was right. But obviously, he's not a main event player. He, he's better off here. And like, like I said, he's not that bad. I actually kind of liked the comedy deal they were doing with like Balian Aki and Kazma and all those guys. Uh, but that, that seems to have just vanished <laughs> for, for whatever reason. Well, I'm, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, not, yeah, not I mean, that yeah, I have it's... anything against Aki or them, but I just hated the, the angle didn't need to go on forever type thing, right? It's not like I'm losing sleep over it, but I just thought it was, a, I thought, thought it was a good comedy angle uh, with everything. When Aki ran it as the referee, I, I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah. And so next it was Shitaro Ashino and Ryuki Honda defeated Shuji Shikawa and Ren Ayabe. Um, Ashino got the ankle lock in 1345 on Ayabe. This was a solid little match. Um, I thought I said I like Ayabe. They've usually had him in six man tag matches. I thought he got a little more exposed as being inexperienced when it was just two versus two tag. Yeah, you know, he's still a little rough around the edges. Uh, he, he's a guy that's coming up on two years wrestling. Obviously, at that size, I think it's going to take a while for him to really, you know, get to that level, uh, you know, in terms of an in-ring performer, really find himself fully at that way. You you know, obviously, I think if you're dreaming, you want him to be a Taue type of wrestler. <laughs> yeah. But, I, you know, it's just not that simple, <laughs> like, to be there that fast. So I think it's going to take some time. 
But like you said, just in six men and stuff like that, he's a, obviously a very imposing presence. I mean, he's billed as like six foot seven. Yeah, uh, he's taller than Shuji. Yeah, 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 exactly. He he has the size. Obviously, he's a great presence. But as a wrestler, I think we're still going to need a, a little while before we get there. So I'm not judging him too harshly, but he's not somebody that should be getting any kind of push or, or anything like it any, no. anytime soon. I, but I think he's good where he's at. It would not shock me if All Japan eventually signs him. Oh, yeah, that seems uh, almost destined at this they point. They like their uh, tall guys, so. Yeah, and, you know, it's a good spot for him to be in. Yeah. You know, J- JTO is a very small company at the end of the day, yeah. so being in All Japan. Well, I mean, yeah, but JTO is different than, like, you know, because people are like, well, why doesn't Ayato Yoshida leave 2AW? But that's not what 2AW is. Yeah. But yeah, JTO is like, you get signed away is the plan, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Taka runs JTO for that exact reason. That's why they split up. Like, the wrestlers want, run t- 2AW. Mm-hmm. Like, when they split up. Like, that was their idea to change everything around. So, yeah, that's why, like, you know, Yoshida and stuff uh, languish. I was talking about that on the Zero One show, like, Go Asakawa. Like, he's a great wrestler, but it's tough when, when you're in 2AW sometimes, and then yeah. Yoshida the same. And then, oh, so this is the All Asia Tag Title match. I'm getting confused because all these title matches they're having, so back-to-back. <laughs> Hokuto Omori and Yusuke Kodama defeated Izanagi and Black Mensa Ray in 13-15 with the Muso Essen on, uh, from Omoro, Omori on Mensa Ray. Uh, yeah, this was fun. Uh, you know, no, I wouldn't say quite at the level of some of the other matches that Omori and Kodama have had for the All Asia Tag Titles this year. But I mean, Izanagi and Mensa Ray are sort of underrated in a lot of ways, really, even though they do a lot of comedy generally. Long time Mensa Ray and Izanagi fan, and I'm very happy to see them get spots like this, especially Mensa Ray coming off that great Sato match uh, that we had a, a couple of months ago. I thought he really got the chance to show out. Um, the North Wolf stands tall, though, here, and we, we can all get behind that. Good match. Uh, always good to see this title reign continue, and hopefully they have a lot more going on, even though uh, who knows what they have planned for Voodoo Murders going in right around the corner. But still, like them a lot as a team. Kodama, I've always said it. He's a guy that if he's just floundering around the card, I don't think he really adds that much. Nope. But if you're putting him in a situation where yeah. he's motivated – that's where he really can shine and be like, oh, yeah, this guy's really good. And he, he just hasn't showed it in five I months. I have been hot and cold on him previously in All Japan, but this year he's pretty much delivered every time, including in that match against the PWF junior title match against uh, Hikaru Sato. That was another gr- really strong match. Yeah. Um, like I said, when he first came into All Japan, he really felt like he was super motivated. Yes. He had a great run early on. And then he was de-pushed, and it was like he disappeared for a year, you know, a year and a half, and nobody knew what he was doing. He was not doing anything special at all. But now with this tag team, he's back at it again, just like you mentioned, uh, and, and Paul as well, when he voted for them as tag team of the year. Right away, when they faced Lindemann and T-Hawk, and they won those titles, it was like the switch was flipped. And now we're getting a really good team and a really good Kodama as well. Yes, definitely, for sure. And so we go to uh, semi main. Eugene Nagata and Dan Tamer defeated Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato in 15 minutes and four seconds with a power bomb uh, that Tamara used to pin Hayato. I think the highlight here was really seeing Nagata and Miyahara uh, mix it up, which was a lot of fun. And Tamara got a big win going into his junior title match. So that was really nice to see. Absolutely agree. And just like I said earlier, Nagata, if you put him in the right situation, he can still deliver. He's not, obviously, he's not where he was in his prime or, or by any, any stretch of the imagination. But even a few years ago, he's lost a, a step. Yeah. But when you put him in the right situation, when you have a guy who can uh, bring a lot of energy, which Kento, that's one of his specialties, and you just want Nagata hit, to hit hard. He could do that well. And he matched up really well with Kento here, in my opinion. I think they did a really good job matching them up. And, and obviously, Tamara getting the win, that's a great thing for him because he's really been taking some punishment lately for Voodoo Murders. Yeah, so I, the, like, to me, what I've decided on is, like, I think Tamara's role is going to be, like, sort of Hanma-esque, whereas he's the lovable loser. And he'll get the occasional, like, All-Asia or junior title shot. But I think he's just going to be a guy that gets beat up a lot, to be honest with you. Grim prognosis <laughs> for no, but, right now. I know it's a spot but, though. It's right, a spot. And, they, and he plays the role well, right? Yeah, that's true. He's not junior ace. I'm sorry. Like and, well, I, that's love the thing. I love him, but you know. 
Well, here's the thing. He's been floundering forever and getting surpassed by multiple people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like he's fallen behind your Hayatos, your Aoyagis, uh, even, you know, someone like Inoue will eventually pass the, you know, him. Uh, Sukamoto, if he can ever stay healthy. Like, yeah. those guys are all going to have more to offer than he does, and I think that's pretty obvious to see. But he's like, still a good talent, so, like, there's it's good for him that he's getting this little spot because, like yes. you said, it's something for him to do, and he can play the role well. So I agree with you there. And then in the main event, Suwama and Shuji Kondo defeated Jake Lee and Yuma Aoyagi in 17 minutes and 14 seconds when Suwama pinned uh, Yuma with a backdrop, which was uh, kind of surprising. I thought, you know, Suwama and Jake would both be in the finish, but I thought this was a pretty good uh, match to sort of build up to the Triple Crown match. It was nice to see Kondo back teaming with Suwama in the main event. And yeah, I mean, I thought it set it up everything well. You know, uh, maybe I'm just, I'm just a little biased because I really think Yuma had such a great run through the carnival. And I feel like we're in a tough spot right now where he's kind of fading to that. Ki- I'm seeing saves of that Kaito Kiyomiya t- type of deal where he was at this one spot. He looked like he was on top well, of the that's world. That's a bit of a strong comparison, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'm saying he's trending towards that right, right now because right. it's like. They got to find something for him to do, basically. Yeah, like, okay, him winning the Champion Carnival was, like, to me, one of the best moments of the whole year. Absolutely. And then it's like, we rushed through his title match, and now, immediately, it's like he's been surpassed by Jake Lee, of all people. <laughs> like, you know, he's jumped in line, and now where does he go from here? Because you look at the roster and where things are going, where is his spot exactly? And that's the thing that's hard to see. They're going to have to create something for him, I feel like, because right now he's suddenly the odd man out and the fall guy for this tag team with Jake. And that's not where he should be, in my opinion. Uh, So, like, what will they, what can they possibly create for him with with his Budokan? Well, I think he's going to keep taming with Jake, and I think they're going to win the real world tag league. And that's no different than where he was with Kento. Yeah. So he's actually taking a step back from where he was, if anything. Like, if if that's true, because Kento's at least a top star. Jake is not at that level to me, mm-hmm. although he's the, he is the champion right now. So to me, that's a clear step back. And he had his pop up. Like we, we jumped him up. He was there. So why are we moving him back? That, that's what I was saying with the Kaito comparison. Cause I, I feel like he was there and now we're pulling him back for some reason that I'm not quite sure of. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe they weren't happy with how that, uh, that title match drew. Maybe they see something against them. I don't know. I'm not sure uh, that you could have drawn that many more people for that title he, match. And because it was such a, a throwaway thing, you know, yeah. at the end of the day. And that should have been, you know, people were talking about that being the Budokan main event. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's all it's all gone oh, by, on the, by the wayside right now. So it's going to be very interesting uh, going forward. Like I said, if that's the plan for him and Jake to be a team and the, the, you know, I don't know if that's really a great sign for his future, to be honest with you. And especially, I think, Nomura making a return also shakes things up a little bit. Uh, I think that... I think that they think because he's like still like what 25, 26, yeah, that they can wait on him for a while because Jake's the same age as Kento. That's true. And so I think whether or not it's justified, you got to go with who you think is going to lead the company. But obviously, there's like seniority yeah. issues and, and and structure in Japan. So I think they got it. They feel like they got to do Jake now, and then Yuma is yeah. going to get his time later. And he's coming off the injury too. Like he never yeah. technically lost the title. Yeah. So that, that might have played into it as now, well. Now, whether that's necessarily the smartest business move, I don't think so, but no, I totally disagree with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, if if I were in the room, I I'd be Oh, Kento versus Yuma would have been my Budokan main event. Like it just depends on what they have up their sleeve. Because Jake yeah. and Budokan main event, what what will the they well, have? We'll get, we'll we'll get to that. So yeah, we well, yeah, I, I think I think we probably have the same idea <laughs> the way you're talking, but let's oh, let's go on then. Yes. So yeah, so that that was those two shows, and I thought they were pretty good, and they built into what we're going to talk about next. So on July 14th, Cork and Hall, I'm just going to talk about the notable matches, but I think this is notable because it is a de- debuting wrestler and uh, a foreigner, Cyrus, who is also called Cyrus the Destroyer, but I don't think he's going to call himself in that in Japan because obviously the connotations of, of calling yourself the destroyer in Japan, you better, uh, someone else is known by that name. Yeah. I and you, you, you want to live up to probably a, a level that this guy's not at. Did you ever see him in, in wrestle one? If I did, it's all past my mind. I'm not saying and, I didn't see him. I'm just saying, I don't remember it. <laughs> I've had many yeah, concussions. No, I, so. I, I, so. I had, I, I don't think I saw any of his stuff in wrestle one. I haven't seen any of his stuff in his indies. He's big guys, like six, four, three, something. 
320, maybe even 350. He's a big guy. So he's right up the alley of the sort of foreigners that they like to book in all Japan. I've heard people say that he looked decent enough. Like he's not going to stick up the place in Wrestle 1. So they're sort of cautiously optimistic. But he's coming in here to, to squash Mensa Ray real fast. You know. Yeah. I mean, no, a, you know, I'm, I'm pulling for him, you know. <laughs> no, could it be an upset here? <laughs> but uh, no, you know, another big guy to bring in. I, I understand that's something they've always kind of been aligned with. And obviously yeah. with guys like Ishikawa and Suwama having a lot of power, that's going to be probably where they lead. Like yeah. they, they probably like that. So we'll have to see what he brings to the table. I'm not going to judge him. I just want to see what he can bring. Yep. Uh, then Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato versus Yuji Nagano and Karo Sato should be a really great match. I'm sure Hayato's taking the fall. I, I think that'll be awesome, but I agree with you completely. Uh, all Asia tag title match. Hokuto Amore and Yusuke Kodama versus Minoru and Toshizo. I don't know. Are they going to belt up Voodoo Murs again? Because Toshizo's already gay or a TV title. He's already had, he already has the title. Yeah. But it just depends on how, how, like, is how much is this Voodoo Murders thing going to infiltrate, like, up and down the card? Well, it already has. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, the, that's the thing. That's what makes me think that they might win. Uh, right. But I could also see Omori or Kodama pinning Toshizo to set up a gay or a TV title match. That's what I hope happens. Yeah, ideally. I'm yeah. thinking if they didn't drop these two. Atsuki and Hayato, which I thought was a, there was a chance of, but they've obviously gone in a different storyline direction with uh, Aoyagi and uh, Hayato. I, I'm going to lean towards Total Eclipse, which may or may not still exist. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because that the, all Japan's a company that's thrown a lot against the wall the last couple of months, and the, pretty much every faction has changed uh, or just they're questionable like next stream and total eclipse like do they exist or not we don't know yeah this is a problem with all japan they just let things flicker out instead of bringing them to their proper conclusions yeah like well i mean to be fair with the gin thing nomura got injured and then the pandemic yeah. happened yeah th but, things kind of hit the fan uh, on yeah. that one so, uh, but uh, hopefully, I mean, I hope Total Eclipse wins this anyway, because I, I would yeah. think, I think you keep them on, you have them a nice, nice little eight month run. And then at Budokan, Saito Brothers get in there and beat them. Sight, the original Saito Brothers respect or far yeah. superior to you who voted yeah, Jade oh, Cargill in the awards. Well, I have no regrets for voting <laughs> Jade Cargill. As absolutely zero. You had one job to get them on the ballot. <laughs> And what did you do? You turned on me after all of this. I'll never forgive you for this. Well, how but... can you vote for both? It's only for one. Uh, well, like I said, that we I thought you were loyal to the Saito brothers, but you changed your mind. Well, but I you will still be voting. One. I will be voting for Ryo Inoue next year in the Observer. So okay, well that's something at least. Uh, yeah. and, and you're right. How, how can you split up the Saito brothers? You know, I understand that you can't. You can't. Vote I guess for both technically, of them. I think June shows a little more potential, but you know, uh, that's true. But I, you know, I agree with you a little bit. But regardless, the Saito brothers coming back to win the, the All Asia titles—that's my dream in the Budokan. I mean, can you imagine that entire place sold out? The fans are cheering again. That all of them stand up when that Saito brothers music hits, and it's like a, two stars are born on one night. Yes. Well, speaking of cheering, I mean, I don't know because I believe Summer Sun Princess has cheering, right? Yeah, it looks like it looks like that's gonna be a thing. Um, so I mean, but no word on whether these cork and this cork and hall show does. So I really don't understand this because they did that at the match, like the, the kickboxing match with yeah. tension, and that had like a million people inside the Tokyo. In the Tokyo yeah, they put every seat of that place. So from my built. understanding, it's the venue's choice, and it's funny because. Oda Ward is municipally owned, and you would think that they would be more stricter than Cork and Hall. I really don't know. Like, this is something yeah. that I feel like we have. This is information we don't have to, yeah, to yeah. make this a term. Why Cork is dragging their feet? Yeah, uh, on this. But anyway, well, but I, I think I think that that is going to be a thing in the very near future. 
uh, even as we're recording this, there's some kind of press conference set up for tonight for a G1. Yeah. And a lot of people speculate that, that might be what gets announced. Uh, so I, I do have a feeling by the time that Budokan show comes around, I think they will. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. But yeah. it would be nice to get them back as soon as possible, honestly. Okay, next yeah. match. Uh, Shotaro Ashino, Ryuki Honda, and Seiko Tachibana in their unit that still doesn't have a name <laughs> versus Stronghearts, T-Hawk, Shigehiro, Irie, and Al Lindemann. This is going to be your little like possible match of the show, actually. I think they need to come up with their name being Shades or something <laughs> like that. Uh, that is kind of their gimmick now. Uh, yep. So, yeah. Uh, Ashina was wearing shades to the press conference for the match. He didn't he even have like a grill on? Oh, I didn't that see that. Weird. Yeah, like uh, you know, wearing it in his mouth. Like I said, awesome. he's like completely styled out right now. He he's a he's a he has a new vision for himself and his character going forward. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that match is really. That's uh, that's gonna be really great. Yeah, and it's just setting up the tag title match on the 18th, but it'll be. I mean, obviously, Tachibana is eating shit, <laughs> but you know that's what he's there for. Yeah, and he'll probably get a chance to really show his stuff too. Oh, for against, sure. against the Strong Hearts team. Okay, so for the PWF Junior Heavyweight Title, Tiger Mask versus Dan Tamara. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I love Dan dearly. Like you know, it's like. I have an emotional connection to him as like the lovable loser guy and, and everything like that with his, um, Aaron, Aaron, sorry, Onigiri, the right balls that he makes and everything like that. Uh, but, uh, I'm not sure he could carry a tiger mask to a match. I thought the Sato and tiger mask match was, was solid, but not nearly as good as any of the other Sato matches. That, that we've right, seen. Right, but I thought Sato yeah. did a good... I think I might have liked it a little more than you, but I thought Sato did a good job of carrying Tiger Mask to something. I was very negative on this match, or that match, because of right. the... Yeah, like, because uh, everything surrounding it. Right, 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 right. right. But, but like, the match was good, though. Like, the work yeah. was good. And, and because of Sato. Like, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. But um, Dan's not that. Yeah, exactly. So I don't I don't think this match will be as good as that match. And even that match, I think, was not as good as their... Mensa Ray and Kodama matches uh, with, with a Sato hat. So I think that we're going to take another step back here a little bit. Um, Tiger Mask 4, I, I do think, though, that this match can be good because I think Tiger Mask excels at old veteran beating up young guy. Right. I think that's his best role. So if we see him in that role, and like you were saying with Tamara as the lovable loser guy, this can actually be an entertaining and enjoyable match. I just don't think it'll be a, as skilled as maybe the Sato match, but I think it could be enjoyable in that range. Um. And, and Tiger Mask wins, obviously, because uh, if you're a New Japan guy, you're going to get a certain quota of title defenses before you drop the title. <laughs> As they've proven that with how they scheduled and, things. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and then so we move on to the semi-main event. Well, actually, not officially, but I have a feeling that it probably will go on semi-main. Yuma and Aoyagi, Yuma Aoyagi and Atsuki Aoyagi versus Real Blood of Naoyo Nomura and Mizuki Watase. Uh, this also actually has a chance to be match of the night if they really, like, decide to, like, go all brutal in on each other, which I think is very possible on this. I think we're going to see a lot of heated interactions between Yuma and Naoya. That could be what he has planned for Budokan. Yes. Like, like Yuma versus Naoya, uh, Naoya uh, there. That would be a pretty big match for him, at least. And it would make sense with the, how they came up together and stuff as well. So there's a lot of story behind this. Uh, Nomura leaving, then coming back. Uh I mean, he left, he left for, you know, I mean, he was gone for a while because of his injury, but then he left for like five minutes pretty much. And they well, came six back. Months about. Yeah. Very non-essential. I mean, he missed the, the carnival. That was like the yeah. main thing he missed. And then after that, he came back, but he's back now. And I think this could be a beggar and, and him and what are a really good team too. What has really improved a lot in Gambari pro. And even before that, as soon as, as Akiyama went to DDT, and Watase was in his group, Junretsu, he really showed a lot of growth, and he's continued to do it, and I think they're going to... And obviously, we know uh, the Aoyagi brothers are both awesome, so this is going to be a great match, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm looking forward to it, and I think it'll tell us a lot of sort of what's next for Nomura in All Japan. And I assume... Well, yeah, I know he's hanging around, because on the uh, 24th, it's going to be Nomura and Wat Watase versus Jake and Hokuto. Yeah. And he and like his entrance was basically calling out the main guys. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, like you know, that basically tells you where he's slotted in. Like he's yeah. going to be in the main event scene sooner rather than later. 
And now we get to the Triple Crown match, Jake Lee versus Suwama. Um, I am very scared. Now, Dylan, I will tell you, I like voodoo murders or at least tolerate them a lot more than you do. I have no problem if it's a six-month run for the 50th anniversary because, you know, they can't exactly go reach into much nostalgia pre-Noah split. They're sort of after the Noah split nostalgia is what they got to go to, and that's fine. But this does not have to involve Suwama winning the Triple Crown again. I thought he was never actually going to win it again. Uh, I don't can't believe that. And if Suwama wins, I think they're running Suwama versus Kent, who is the main event of the Budokan, which they was a big match for them five, six years ago. They ran that like sumo hall for like Kento versus Suwama, and they're running it again six years later. Come on, it's time to move on. And just and also Jake Lee winning the triple crown back after finally beating Kento in a triple crown match, only to make only to lose it right away to Suwama. That further geekifies Jake. So it is just a bad idea on so many levels. And I am very terrified that it's going to happen. Well, talk me off the ledge. Thankfully, there's a much different scenario I see playing out. Even if you're a huge Voodoo Murders fan. And like I said, you're totally right, Gerard. I hate Voodoo Murders. I always have. <laughs> I hated them when I first started watching this Japanese wrestling. I hated them in Zero One. I hated them in the Indies. I hated them in all formations that they've had. And I do not need to see them anymore. Although, I agree with what you said. As a nostalgia run, I can get down with that. You know, that, that's something, I mean, I'm not going to like it, but I at least understand it. Because like it or not, they were a big part of this company in the late 2000s. It just is what it is. And I think I understand why they would want to go this route. But how about this? Uh, this is like the, the worst case scenario. Obviously, the best case is that Jake... You know, he just wins and goes on and has a normal match in Budokan. So they save this match. Jake Lee defeats Suwama. And everything's I, cool. God, I'm praying. And it leads to Jake calling out the leader of Voodoo Murders for Budokan. Taru versus Jake, Budokan main event. Mm. Okay, show's over. That's it. <laughs> let's just hope they never hear this right (laughs) i'm not saying i have sway with the big dog but maybe he's listening if i had sway a lot of things would be different right now i I, I would argue i I think i think let me put it this way i think they've done a pretty darn good job this year but they're they'd piss it all the way if suama wins this i feel like there's been some i honestly think that there's been some kind of change that nobody knows about because they were doing so well. well the I first... think I think it's like Yuma probably threatening to walk if they didn't change. Well, he, if it, he gave that interview in December saying things had to change in all Japan, and it, they sort of started started in January. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, for well, I, I think la- like last October they had a really good run of shows. It was like when Ishikawa suddenly was having all these good matches right, as TV yes, champion yeah. again, and like they had that big Kento versus Jake match. Uh, they had a really good tag league, and it felt like the company. Uh, then things started with January, and it feels like things are going in a good way. Uh, you had, you know, the, the junior title was a little shaky. Sugi was champion. His run didn't go that great. But Sato won the title. Then Runaway Suplex is in the middle of a great tag run. And Kento's the champion, bringing the fans back in. Your, you know, houses were going all the way up when he was champion. And it felt like things were firing on all cylinders through to the end of the champion carnival with that amazing moment right. and amazing match. Suddenly after that, I don't know what happened. Yeah, there was another little reset. Yeah. And sure. remember, yeah, remember that show where everybody turned and yeah. like pretty much like there was that one show where everything changed it was pretty much Japan out of nowhere. Is raw. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's coined on uh, the Emerald Flow show. But I think that it, something has changed there and I don't know what it was where all the factions just got reset. People were turning. They've de-pushed Yuma. I don't know what's going on. And I feel like ever since then, I, I I said it at the time. I said, we're going to look back at six months after that show where either they ascended to a new level and they have some great stuff up their sleeve and Budokan is a huge hit and it all started there. Or we're going to look back at six months and saying, this is where things really went downhill when they made all these changes, when it didn't seem like they even needed to because it felt like they were on a good path in pretty much every division. But something changed Maybe they feel like they needed to change for to because of this Budokan show, and they feel like they needed extra things. 
I, I think actually that Jake will win the in all seriousness, Taro will not <laughs> challenge for the triple crown. I we can only pray that that does not happen. <laughs> but I think he'll beat Suwama. I think the idea is for Nagata to be in a main event run uh, for Budokan. Well, we we already discussed this, but Nagata, interestingly enough, is on that Akiyama show. Yeah, that doesn't mean that, he can't work. And that's the the wrench that they've thrown into this. But, but I, that that doesn't yeah. mean he can't be on the Budokan show. But that slightly lowers my expectation that he could win because I would assume on this show they announced the Odo tournament participants. Yeah, that's true. That, that's going to let us know a lot there uh, yeah. going forward, if he's in it or not. Because I think, like, main event for Budokan, that would be the last match on the All Japan show. So, that would, like, would that make it easier for him to, to move if he has a, a little extra time? Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the the DDT show will be over before All Japan begins. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I think it's still possible. We'll, we'll have yeah. to see how it goes, but that's just what I was thinking. Yeah. For sure. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, it could just be Jake versus Kento again. That would be the most boring explanation. Yeah. And I don't think anything is served because like, do you have Jake defeat Kento again in the main event of the Budokan to prove that he's like truly surpassed Kento? Or do you have Kento beat Jake, but still it feels too soon to take it off of Jake if you're serious about him? Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know what the deal is with there. We had uh, Stringer had an idea that maybe they think a title match on itself will be a draw, and maybe Kento can have his own big singles yeah, match versus a, maybe a New Japan guy. That's what yeah. I was thinking as well. Uh, I don't think Jake versus Yuma is out of the realm of possibility either. Yeah, I agree with that. And I you think could that, do like yeah. you could do Yuma versus Naoya in the Odo tournament finals. That would be good. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good path to get to where they need to go. And then everything kind of works out at the end of the day. I just don't they, think it, uh, it, what will happen is not what we're fantasy booking right now. But, you know. Who knows what that, like I said, yeah. who knows what their mindset is. That Like, to me, it just feels like with this Tiger Mask thing, they feel like they need New Japan help for yeah. this Budokan show. And that, that that's what I'm thinking uh, with, with that. And Nagata's been in pretty big spots throughout his run so far, but nothing too major. And it feels like they're not just going to have him around just to goof around in, in some of main events. So that's my prediction. And I'm not saying it's a good or bad or otherwise. And who knows? Like you said, what, what they have in mind. But thankfully, now that I've floated out Taru made of any Budokan, I think whatever they do will be better than that. So well, I, imp- I appreciate your confidence that Jake is retaining because... Uh... Yeah, I just don't I, think I it makes that. a lot of sense. I know. It's just... I, I know. Like, them doing like, something that stupid is not off-brand. Like, Especially know. the last month, like two months. Like I said, if if yeah. we had, if you had said this at the end of the Champion Carnival, you said, Dylan, Suwama's going to join Voodoo Murders and win the title. I'd be like, what? But now, coming into this, after these last couple of months, it feels like that's a legit possibility. Yep. And that sure. kind of... That shows you how things have not gone <laughs> how they should have in my opinion but now i'm only one person yeah okay so real quick we'll just talk about the important matches on uh july 18th in osaka at the osaka flower expo memorial sarumi ryokuchi hana mizuki hall uh it's like a like an athletic center in the middle of a large park in osaka so i wonder if they're and it's an afternoon show on a sunday so i wonder if there's some sort of festival going on in the park at the same time and they're sort of piggybacking off of that which would be a smart move for them um anyway the main event actually no i'll start at the quick bottom uh it's hokuto amore and yusuke kodama versus yoshitachi and oji shiba i only mentioned that because it's nice to see shiba back in all japan and i think they should keep using them totally agree look great it is a uh, run last month and then uh another match of note yuma aoyagi atsuki aoyagi zeus and the bodyguard versus Yuji Nagata, Hikaru Sato, Dan Tamara, although it's listed as either Dan or Tiger Mask, but it's going to be Dan, and Ryo Inoue. So if you want to... That should be a lot of fun. Have Yuji Nagata and the Bodyguard ever interacted? If not, they should have. And now they'll have a chance to recommend that. Yeah, so uh, hopefully Bodyguard also sings his theme song out there. Uh, That'll be a moment. Yeah, Uh, that's a great theme song. Um, Suwama and Taru versus Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato. Basically, Hayato's going to get the shit beaten out of him, and, and I'm sure Voodoo Murders will win because either Suwama will be the Triple Crown champion or Suwama would have just lost, and they're going to give him another win. Now we get... Yeah. Bodyguard never interacted with Nagata. Okay, great. First time ever. Um, 
the historic moment in Osaka, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, uh, so the PWF junior title, Tiger Mask or Dan Tamara, but it'll be Tiger Mask versus Izanagi. I think this has a chance to be better than the Dan Tamara match, that's for sure. Because Izanagi is a, is a solid veteran hand. Well, I think he's more than solid, but you know what I mean by that. Um, and yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I, I'll like it too. I, I think I will. And Izanagi getting this kind of filler title match to get us, like, like you said, New Japan must have required a number of title defenses and they're now filling this out as fast as possible before well, the I, Royal Road Tournament. Yeah, because I don't, maybe Tiger Mask gets a defense during the Royal Road Tournament, but it's either one more defense because I'm assuming he's dropping it at Budokan, but maybe New Japan will wake up and say no. I don't know. <laughs> yes, he will never lose. Yeah, exactly. Hey. But yes, no, I, I, I think that's probably the purpose of it. But yeah, you know, it could be a good match. And our main event, which is something that I am extremely excited for that I think could seriously be like a tag match of the year in Japan, Shotara Shino and Ryuki Honda versus T-Hawk and Shigahiro Irie. Now, I thought to myself, is there a chance that the great team, the Strong Hearts team win? I don't think it's impossible. However, now that great is introducing the G-Infinity titles, I don't think that they're going to have them win here. I don't know. What do you think, Dylan? It's going to be interesting. Like you said, they've just introduced these tag titles. And Kento's in the tournament. Yes, they, they, that was uh, talked about there. They, they announced that there. It's going, to just, it's going to be interesting to see what they have planned there. Kento is in a really unique spot right now where we all assume that he has some big stuff going on in the future. Yep. But now with this great run that they're teasing, that could be something that we have to look forward to. So, yeah, I, I can. Isn't the tag title tournament only on two shows or is it more than that? I think it's only on two. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's just one of those things. What will his future be? Will he be somebody maybe great, particularly asked for him to, to be there, uh, you know, and, and have a big role of some sort. But to what me, I'm think, with you. What do you think of a Kento and Soma Watanabe team? Oh, that would be really cool. I, like, I, I would and be you totally put the titles down. on them? Soma needs something. I, he's another guy I think doesn't get talked about enough. But that would be great, uh, formerly Pegaso Illuminar in Wrestle yeah. 1. Uh, you know, that would be a really cool team if they did that. I, I wish they would do that. And they have a great, like, they would go t- together aesthetically. You, you know, yeah. like they just look like they could be tag team partners. So uh, introduce. And then maybe it's not some a big deal. deal. What Watanabe can just do the job when it's time to lose the titles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and maybe you could get Watanabe on some big show for All Japan as well. That would be a yeah. good thing for them. Uh, you know, and maybe he, this would be the sign of Kento starting some kind of new group. Uh, right. Now that next stream appears, you know, this could be the first step in that. If they wanted to do that. I'm all for that idea. I don't know if it'll happen, but I. I kind of hope it does now. That would yeah. be a lot of fun. But well, either way, I do think that Stronghearts will lose this match, though. Yeah. Uh, well, Stronghearts will win the six-man to set it up. And yeah. Iria is a freelancer. Although yeah. they, he is protected, actually, both in Great and All Japan relatively well. He doesn't do that many jobs. Except for when he lost the TV title recently. Right. right. Although, Which technically, I believe Black Mensa Ray was the one that was registered as getting pinned. Oh, okay. So, I, that's you know, the result listed on the All Japan website. The X is beside Mensa Ray. They, they, okay, that's that's protection. When yeah. they'll go out of their they'll go out of their way to say you didn't lose a match. Uh, but yeah, you know it's, that's a, that's a good point there. You now, know, what do you think? Okay, uh, remember, I think yeah, because you were reading my reviews and talked about this. Remember, T Hawk defeated Ashino in the Champion Carnival with that sort of no selling the T bone and rolling uh, him up, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Ashino could get his win back here? Because t doesn't seem to be the most protected guy in great these days. Yeah, that's I could definitely see that happening, uh, to be honest with you. Like you said, t not exactly one of the focus feet guys. I don't know why he's not, but he, he he's not for whatever reason. But I guess, you know, he could always pop up again if they just, you know, wake up one day and decide yeah. to. I uh, think he, Ashino pins Irie. Yeah, that's the safe bet. But I don't think your idea of him pinning, t- pinning T-Hawk is completely off either. No, I, but, I mean, I got to tell you, great. They got to stand up for their wrestlers. <laughs> <Like, laughs> yeah, I, look, I understand the logic of sometimes, especially if you're a much smaller company and you want the New Japan rub, especially because they're going to play hardball the most. Like, okay, you got to sacrifice a couple losses to get Al Lindemann in the best of the Super Junior. But it is show after show after show that especially the women are losing to every outsider under the sun. 
Oh, yeah. The, now that Takahashi is there, we can hope that will change at least. Uh, maybe uh, she can bring some credibility uh, to the Joshi division. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for the men's wrestlers, I, I have to recommend my own show right now. I give a little bit of a plug to our latest episode because I'm you had a stringer- great rundown of the great show, I must say. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but Stringer constantly defends <laughs> like the booking of El Lindemann. And I was very okay. Uh, okay, so I remember this, and I and I laughed, and I I see your point, but I I got to side a little more with Striga, like 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 I said, it's the size of great, and you have to make these compromises to get attention and a platform. Yes, and well, I, uh, I I don't th- I think it's more of a problem for the company overall as opposed to specifically just Linda. Well, yeah, you made a good point about the Joshi division as well. But yeah, like everybody in the company, not just Linda, but he's but he's the one that's the most important because he's a champion, right? In my in my opinion, uh, yeah. So I, I just, you know, it's not even just the booking itself; it's how they go about it. So, like for example, him taking the losses in the tournament, I don't mind. It's when they go directly out of their way to have them lose to Doki in one night before he has a title shot, right? That right. is like bullcrap to me and i i cannot accept that being anything less than that uh you know and, and stuff like that um you know the, the company like you said it's not just limited it's the whole company but right now like you said they are a smaller company they've managed to get a pretty good amount of publicity all things considered you know they've done pretty you know whenever they step up for a big show they seem to do good uh, all the time you know that show the one we talked about was nagata in the main event um, versus Takanori Ito in a UWF match. So that was very interesting uh, there. To, to, that's another one that, you know, another guy that t- took some falls recently. But overall, I do think that ultimately for the All Japan purposes of all of this, I think that Ashino will, will be made to look strong here. And that's something we can always like. They've done a great job with this team, for you know, getting them off to a good start with him and Honda. Well, I didn't have high hopes because I didn't think they were going to win the titles, but I'm all in on them now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, just the way they got there was so sloppy. Yeah. That, you know, but they've made it work just through sheer talent. And Honda, he, everything he does turns to gold. He's got the Midas touch, pretty much. Like, ever since they've given him a push at the start of the year, it's like right away, he fits right in. Even in the tournament, I mean, he, he didn't win a single match, but he was good in all of his matches. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy everything and, he's done. And then as soon as the tournament was over, they gave him a win over Yoshitatsu. <laughs> I, I, as he should be beating Yoshitatsu, yes. in my opinion. Yes. Um, exactly. But yes, yeah, so and now they've given him his tag title rub. It looks great. You know, like Youngest they, world tag team champion ever in all Japan. And his future could be youngest winner of another title as well yeah. if they if they continue how they're going, because I think he has everything it takes to be a top star in this company. So I do think that they will get the win. Although I, I will say, I love Tiak a lot. I, he's like one of my favorite oh, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I always enjoy seeing him in anything he does. And Irie has been, been a great performer, in my opinion, and not just in all Japan. He he was a guy that nobody really talked about going into the Champion Carnival as much as maybe some of these other guys. But by the end of it, he felt like one of the strongest performers. Yes. He, he's coming off that amazing match with Lindemann. A lot of people liked it in great for the title. And I thought he particularly looked really, really great in that match. No pun intended. He feels like a really complete performer. That should be a banger of a match. Absolutely. So that is the uh, show in Osaka on the 18th. And then we will return, I guess, uh, a few days or a day after the 18th and talk about Noah Budokan, the All Japan Korokin, and the uh, All Japan show in Osaka. And especially in All Japan, I think these are two make or break shows just in terms because they could make some very stupid choices that would ruin a lot of goodwill that All Japan has has worked up because I've heard from people that haven't watched all Japan in a while that have started to watch again, especially thanks to the carnival. Have you heard of that at all? I think especially when Kento won the title, I think that it was actually when things started to, because there was that big show in yeah. March before the carnival where it felt like a lot of people suddenly started to talk about it more uh, on there. And obviously going into the carnival, I think they had a really strong tournament. And if you're a new viewer, I think it was even better because you had a like self-contained plot with Aoyagi getting the win, even though obviously it didn't lead maybe to where we wanted it to or how we wanted it to. Just watching the carnival, it was a self-contained story with a very dramatic and great win for, uh, you know, very good talent, like great wrestler, great look, 
really draws you in if you're a new viewer. I think that they set things up well. And like you said, they had a lot of momentum. I wonder where we're going to be if things continue how they're going into Budokai because I think they've things have gotten shaky. Like I, I, right now, the last yeah, couple. Of weeks, I will say, well, yeah. Um, I'm. A, it just comes down to me what happens with, between Suwama and Jake. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're very worried about that match. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a little more confident with the booking overall, but that would just turn it than I, I think you are. But that would just completely turn it around for me. Yeah, I just feel like we went from Kento and Sato as your singles champions and Irie to, you know, uh, Jake and Tiger Mask and Toshizo. Uh, yeah. And it's like, uh, like that's a, a pretty strong downgrade all sure, around. Sure. Uh, but, you know, and the tag titles ended up working. Like, it seems like they're working out, even though it doesn't look like, remember when that happened, everyone was like, oh, Ashino, get his big win over Suwama. Yeah, and, and like, he just it, is it, like, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah, no, no one does. You and yeah. Dan and Hikaru can take care of this on their own. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Nagata. Yeah, so, well. <laughs> well, that should be interesting. Anyway. Let's see where we're going. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, like I said, it, at best, it's been shaky. Maybe they can turn things around because they. it's like we were talking about with DDT at the start of the show to bring things back full circle. It felt like they were a cold company, not necessarily like sh- I, like shaky wouldn't be how to describe them. They weren't doing anything wrong, per se. They just weren't very exciting. But then suddenly you get a, a, a run of a good few weeks and now it feels like you're a super hot promotion heading into your big show. So there's no reason all Japan can't have this Odo tournament, put on a really good tournament, have maybe a dramatic winner, set things up for a big main event, and suddenly, you know, any struggles we've forgotten about or don't matter as much. If they can, if they can pull out something big for the Budokan, none of this stuff will really matter if they can get that right. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, God, we're almost gone three hours. So Dylan, any plugs before we go? Yeah, just uh, check me out on Twitter at Viva underscore zero. Uh, shout out to Ray, my all-time favorite Joshi wrestler. Uh, I took uh, part of her Twitter handle in, uh, in tribute. Rest in peace there. We're coming up on an anniversary of that, too. Um, check out my show, Eastern Lariat, as we talked about. Again, if you haven't heard it, it's all about Japanese wrestling. We cover all Japan New Japan, NOAA, DDT, Joshi Pro Res. We talk a little bit about pretty much everything here uh, on our show, and we've been doing it for a while now. Follow us at Eastern Lariat, very cleverly named as well, right after the show. The no creativity there. But yeah, you follow our account too, you get a lot of news updates and stuff on there too about uh, Japanese wrestling. We usually hit that pretty, pretty early uh, to a lot of sources. Our show is really strong. We're coming up on our half year awards, and uh, hopefully, if you get if the show airs in time, go on there. Maybe you can vote. Uh, throw in your votes for the half year. It's open to everybody, whatever kind of fan you are. If you love Noah, you love All Japan, you love DDT, you love Joshi, even if you're an AEW fan, go ahead and vote. Nobody's stopping you. There's no rules. I mean, there are kind of rules, but regardless, uh, do anyway, it is anyway. Forbidden Door going to count as a show of the year? Now that was a New Japan show, technically. It, it, uh, I would allow that. I don't know what Striga thinks. You know, <laughs> Striga has to have the final say at the end of the day. Uh, you know, because like you said, you've ruled on his side with Linda. And even at the end of that, I, I said, I admitted I was cranky. I didn't have any sleep, man. And you know, <laughs> you're holding me to these high standards right now. But no, it, it, he will determine that. But I, I say vote for it anyway and see what he says. At least give, it, give yourself the option. And I will fight for you, I promise. So yeah, follow us on there and uh, hopefully you all enjoy that stuff. Oh, we have a Patreon too, patreon.com slash Eastern Lariat. I do all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, there's been so many different styles of shows over the last few months, but we cover even more stuff that maybe we don't even get to cover on the, the main show, especially me, because I, I watch everything and that's kind of crazy, but I do it. And, you know, coming up, we had a, I just did a zero one show. I did that earlier this morning too. I put that up. Well, I did it yesterday, but I put it up this morning. And uh, we have the the 90s project coming up. We just did the top 10, the awards show on that. That was a ton of fun. I uh, got through all the way through 96 and 97 is coming up really soon. I'm going to really speed rush through that too. Uh, so we're going to have another big show there. And Stardom, five-star uh, Grand Prix coming up. Every single match will be covered. Ratings, predictions. Uh, me and Dr. Jonathan, uh, Dr. Jonathan Foy, we're going to do a prediction show for New Japan G1 and all of that and all of the fun stuff in Japanese wrestling and American wrestling too, uh, sometimes depending on what you said. So lots of fun stuff in the Eastern Lariat world and hopefully you all enjoy that. But most importantly, keep supporting Emerald Flow Show. Uh, love seeing what you guys are doing here, Gerard. 
And uh, ever since you've popped up, I've really enjoyed all of your episodes. Like I said, I'm a consistent listener, not just a co-host now. I, even if you had never asked me, I still would have listened <laughs> to, all, to all of your shows. But seeing you do this, I'm very proud of you uh, with all of the success you have on the Voices of the Wrestling Network. And hopefully it just gets bigger and bigger for you guys. Oh, well, thanks so much for being here, Dylan. And I will say I've been a uh, Eastern Lariat Patreon subscriber for a while now. And it's, it's definitely a great deal for your five bucks. You get a lot of content. And you get some updates on almost like every promotion, even ones that I don't watch, which is a really handy way to <laughs> keep me updated on what's going on in companies that I don't watch. That is my biggest advertisement for the Patreon. Uh, listen to my shows and then su- just agree with me and my opinions. It'll make, it'll make you look smarter, like you watch <laughs> them yourself, but you don't have to watch it. Just steal my opinions and claim them for yourself. That, that is the thing. I encourage it. I allow it. And I, I want it to happen because I, I don't want you spending all of your time watching wrestling like I do. That they don't The world doesn't need more of me. You have me, and I'm here for you. So, uh, yes, th- thank you for that. Uh, all right. That yeah, once again, thank you so much for coming on, Dylan. And we will see you in two weeks.